What is up, everybody that's joining us here for the first time? Uh, welcome again. My name is Juvenal, and I'm here with my boy Ben from Needlepoint Embroidery. And uh, welcome to episode six, I believe. Episode six now, so five or six. We're we're doing so many that we're actually losing lost. count. Losing count a little bit. I'm losing count, man. We got so many people booked, so many people coming. Uh, you know, coming next. So excited to have you guys again. The vision of this channel and kind of why we're here, right? We're, you know, I've been in this industry for about 10 years in the whole business consulting space. So I made this channel so that you guys can not only get a chance to meet some awesome guests like Ben here that are entrepreneurs making it happen, not just in L.A., not just in Cali, but across the world. Right. And uh, share some education with you guys as how to is what he's done, some lessons learned. Right. Things that we can do uh, if somebody is new to the industry so that they can also have the kind of success that somebody like you know Ben is having. And the third thing, most important thing, is we're here to have a good time, good <laughs> right? Time. No there's no talk. script. There's no questions that no have questions. been, you know, prepared. This is going to be all organic here. And so we're more than anything is we're here to help you guys grow. We're going to be bringing people that are influencers. We're going to bring people that are grupos, up and coming artists, and we're going to bring people that have at least six figure businesses or more. So we're excited to have, you know, Ben here from Needlepoint Embroidery. So thank you, thank you for joining us, bro. Uh, thank you, thank you for having me on the podcast. Seeing you've been having a lot of. Uh, a lot of brands coming in, dandy hats, all cash, you know, finest merch. So it's an honor to be here. No, no. Shout out to the, to the homies as well. Yeah, shout and, out to all of the homies. And, and, and we're here, right? We're here to talk. Uh, no, a lot of people don't know you. I don't yeah. know if you want to give some of your background. I know you just had your grand opening. Yeah. So congratulations. Uh, about three weeks ago. Yeah, no, thank you. Your Appreciate official uh, separate official. grand opening, right? Separate grand opening, uh-huh. If you were the comment, if you were there, we definitely want to make sure you, you know, we, we shout you guys out in saludos because to everybody that was at the grand opening. Yeah. I missed it. I know you missed it, man. It was, it was pretty good. A lot of grupos right there. I uh, heard you had some pretty big, big grupos, people, everybody show up. Yeah, huh? it, was, it was pretty fun. It was pretty. It was a good experience. Where can people find you now, man? Tell me a little bit about your business. Uh, I mean, oh, I mean, you guys, you can put up my Instagram right there, right? Needlepoint Embroidery. We'll That's put the it name right of there. the company right there. Um, we, yeah, we, I mean, we do embroidery for brands that are coming up, businesses, uh, or if you just want to make some custom pieces, you know, just something personal for you guys. Um, Basically anything that has to do with embroidery, and we're getting more into printing and stickers and you know all that, all the printing stuff. Mm. How did you get started in that, bro? Because I, I mean, for those of you who don't know, right? You, there's entrepreneurs of all ages. You know, I myself, I'm gonna be 28 on August 18th, so you know, coming up. Any any birthday gifts? You feel free to send them my way. <laughs> send them over. <laughs> but um, you know, I know you're. you're I'm young. A, yeah, I'm 22. I'm just turned 22. 22, man. That's 22. awesome. Congrats on, on everything you've built so far. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a, not easy. You know, it takes a little bit of hard work, but, you know, the hard work en ends up paying off, you know what I mean? But, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've always been uh, into, like, the creative kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, doing, whether it's embroidery or I used to take a, a class in high school, mm. a graphic design class, just kind of messing around on Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator. Yeah. So, you know, all those, you know, little creative classes kind of helped me guided me in a certain on a certain direction but um but yeah i mean there's there's uh you know there's there's you know i took that route of being more creative kind of yeah. and that kind of you know led me to this to that when i was actually in a uh, elementary school i used to sell like little duct tape wallets you know what i mean i don't know oh, if you remember those duct tape wallets man I like little like little wallets made out of duct tape mm. just like little stuff like that five bucks two bucks three bucks whatever it was Oh, but then that cool. kind of started getting me into like, you know, because I've always been trying to, you know, hustling here and there, you know, little little stuff, selling snacks in high school, stuff like that. Bro, it's but like everybody that has come on the podcast almost that says, is a hustler, says that? they've been selling something. Something. Like tortas, chips, candy. I was in the same boat. Too, yeah. So. That's how it all and started. Then, I mean, yeah. well, first, like I said, it started when I was in probably like about middle school mm -hmm. with the duct tape wallet, stuff like that. And then once I got into high school, selling chips and sodas and whatever you know all kinds of stuff mm. candy stuff like that um and then from there like after i graduated i was like you know how do i keep doing this you know i'm already not gonna be in school how am i gonna sell chips and stuff like that so then i got a vending machine mm. and then you know i found a place for the vending machine and it was kind of like the same business model just the chips and it kind of does it on its own you know so i That's saved up some of that money to like kind of continue doing that until i found a a certain uh you know path to take kind of you know what I mean? mm. 
Did so. you only have one vending machine or? Just one. Yeah, I just had one. It was a, uh, well, I started off with like, you know, just like a cheaper one. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I bought another one, you know, I upgraded a little bit. And then, uh, you know, from there, I, I ended up with just two of them. And I still have them. I still have those two vending machines. They're still operating. Yeah, still operating, yeah. Where are these vending machines? They're at uh, they're at my dad's company. So, um, for those those of you guys that don't know, my dad owns a uh, we own a family business for mattresses. So okay. they do uh, foam manufacturing for mattresses, um, chairs, uh, you know the seats for like the razors and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we do all the all the manufacturing for that, mm. and then they send them out. That's where they put the leather on them, and then that gets to the end end user, the end consumer after. Okay, so you guys are the last place right there before they, the user or the end consumer gets it? Or? Kind of like towards the top and then kind of like the last piece is like the decorating, like the leather, the, you know, the color that you're going to put on the foam. And then from there, they send it out to the end consumer. Uh, Better than temper Pudics. Yeah. All these other brands? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, you already know the plug. The plug. <laughs> the plug for I'm going to need to get one of those, man. Uh, dude, my birthday's coming. <laughs> <laughs> embroidery and mattresses, bro, everything. That's actually how we started doing the embroidery because... Uh, oh. So get like raising up the money from the vending machines. Yeah, I started putting it aside because I know that I wasn't gonna be able to just do vending machines, you know, all all my life. You know, I c I've always wanted to do kind of a business. Yeah, but wasn't really too sure on what it was. So that's why I kept the vending machine going to kind of save up until an opportunity came. Oh, and okay. uh, how old were you when you got your first vending machine? Uh, well, it was, it was right after I graduated high. Well, I was actually already in my last year of high school, so. Like senior 17, year, 18. So yeah, 17, 18. Uh -huh. That's sick. 17, 18. Um, Cause most people are buying Jordans. Most people are just throwing yeah. money out, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, I, I was, you know, buying Jordans and stuff like that oh too. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. the uh, the important thing was like, you know, I got to find, you know, like a pathway to actually, uh, you know, like, I, like a legit business, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not just vending machines. So, well, I saved up that, that money. And then after that, I started doing car wraps, started wrapping cars. Um, wrap so you, didn't, you didn't jump in with no, you I didn't, didn't you didn't say hey dad you know I know you have a business let me just jump in and work with you you started doing something else yeah no I was still I was working with my dad and then oh. aside you know after working with my dad I would get get home do the the car wrapping or yeah. the other stuff so you, you didn't want to just kick it and hang out or what, what no you, yeah what I, I mean I've like I know there was always like a time for that too you know mm. but I, like I said I always had the uh, the motivation to kind of want to start something. You know, what I mean, start a start a business, or you know, the drive to start a business, or yeah, you know, take take that take that route. But um, mm. yeah, it was kind of like a always working working with my dad, or mm. going to the filling up the vending machine, yeah. buying more product for the vending machine, or doing the car wraps. Mm. So it was always kind of back and forth. But yeah, I mean, the car wraps the car wraps started because I always liked cars too. Yeah, cars. Um, like I said, the creative side of me, you know, being able to change the color of a car with the with you know the car wrap is just a piece of vinyl. It's like putting a sticker on a car. Yeah. So, you know that took some time too to learn because there's a whole technique for that too. You know. That's not it's easy, like, man. I've had cars wrapped before, and it it's uh, it's not easy. It's not easy, especially white cars. Like uh, white cars are the most hardest to wrap because if mm. there's any little imperfection, you'll be able to see the white. It stands come out. up. Yeah, it stands out. So that th those are the hardest cars to wrap. So, if you guys ever want to get a car wrap, this probably get better to get a black car. If you know you're gonna wrap it, you know what I mean. If you know you're gonna wrap so it down so the line, my Audi can't get wrapped. Then I'll <laughs> no, <laughs> if it's white, it's gonna be not. a surcharge. Yeah. <laughs> no, I yeah, and they do Audi they do so. charge a little more too if it's if it's white. Really? Yeah, I believe I believe. Yeah. I mean, because it's it takes more work. Yeah. Especially yeah. in the uh, in the door jams, because you if, mm. if your your car is white and you wrapped it black, mm. and you open the door, you'll be able to see the white right away. That's true. So it's that's like true. they and they wrap the door jams too, but you know that's that's extra, extra. as well. Mm. Yeah, it's true because my my door jams didn't get wrapped. I remember that I had a I had a gold Audi R8. It was gold wrapped with yeah. black. Yeah, yeah. But the door jams were well, that gray. Was, that was your Audi. Yeah, that was mine. Oh boy, you probably. How do you know it? Uh, I don't know. It's just a whole bunch of stories about that. Oh boy. Nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, I, cause you, I mean, you've always been here in Downey, right? I've been in HP. I grew up in HP, so I've, I've been in the area. But did, were you were you um. Did you do a uh, like a fundraiser for Thanksgiving? I did. I With do uh, every year. I do Thanksgiving fundraisers, and we do like Christmas store drives as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. So that's how you probably know one of my one of my boys named Stephen. 
He was the one yeah. that kind of organized the, the Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Shout out to the homie Steven. Shout out to Steven. Where, yeah, where, him and uh, Luis. Watching. Luis as well. Yeah, Luis. Luisito. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we collabed on the first one, and then the second one, they helped me out. Yeah, yeah. that's that. That's when you said gold, a gold Audi. I was like, yeah. That sounds familiar. Yeah, we took it to the. I was supposed to go to that one, but then I I had ended up going to a family trip. I think it was in Vegas at Thanksgiving. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. I, I helped them like package up the. Uh, yeah, they brought a bunch. Of, we brought a bunch of packages. Yeah, so I, I we we're doing it in, in my garage probably to like one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Every day, every day, bro. We were doing every day, bro. Yeah. We had so many things, which was was awesome, man. I know this year we're gonna do that as well. Thanksgiving time, you know, we love to go back and, and give give out food to the homeless, essentials, yeah. and all that stuff. So. Exactly. Yeah. So what a small world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's my good friend from from middle school. We started. Mm. I think I met I mean, those guys because of the car scene, and then I. Yeah, and then I saw that they were doing also a fundraiser like charity event. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, man, let's collab. So yeah, because I mean, I, I've known Steven since from probably like sixth grade, oh, so he's, he's you know he's my good friend. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, he uh, you know, he 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 told me about you that you wanted to collab with him on that uh, on that fundraiser. Yeah. So that's how that's how I remember. And when you told me Gold Audi, I was like, oh, yeah. this sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I had that wrapped, and that was the only one around here, so I had definitely. Definitely pops and stuff now, yeah. but it was gray under, so door the side on the doors were always yeah. gray. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, uh, so that's that's like if you have a lighter car. Now I have a know, white, I have yeah. a white Audi now. So, so as you can imagine. Little, I mean, it it could still be done, you know. Whoever does wraps, you know, they'll they'll be able to get it done. It just mm. takes a little more detailed work to get the edges right and everything. Mm. You know what I mean? Well, how did you fall in love with cars, man? Uh, from the beginning, I mean, my family's always been into cars too, you know. Okay. Um, old school cars, um, like the newer cars, stuff like that, you know, everything. So I was always into cars and, you know, again, with the creative side, I've always liked whatever it had to do with, like, the design of cars. Mm. So that's how I started uh, doing the car wraps. Started off with, uh, you know, my friend's cars, just doing the hood or, or the roof of the car. Yeah. And then, uh, and then yeah, just, like, hood, roof, or, hey, you know, can you wrap the, the door handles or can you wrap the uh, the the... Uh, what is it called? The rear view mirrors, like the caps. Yeah. You know, carbon fiber wraps, so all, all that stuff, you know. And then uh, and then I did a, a full car wrap. I did a full car wrap. I had only done one. And then after that, was that, after that, I was like, damn, this is a lot of work right here. Because yeah. it took me uh, <laughs> you probably You probably undercharged, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I did. I did. Yeah, yeah I did. And it, and it took me, uh, it, I remember it took me two days to wrap that, that car. Mm. Um, but what I, I car was, was it? It was a... Uh, it was uh, what was it? Um, it was an Infinity, I believe it was. Mm. Yeah, I believe it was an Infinity. Um, that's and a small car too. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I was like, man, it's a lot. Of, you know, it's a lot of work. Yeah. But it took me two days. I was working on it from, you know, eight, uh, seven, eight in the morning, to like ten o'clock at night, just all day. Jeez. And it and it was my friend's car, so you know he needed it. He needed it to to get to where he had to go on Monday, you know, to go to work and stuff. So I had to had to finish it. You know what I mean? And uh, after that, that's kind of where I realized, like, damn, this is it's, it, it. It is a lot of work, and it it's cool, mm. but I was like, um, you know, I don't know if this is, would be the right, the right path that I was looking for, you know. Mm. So then, dude, how much did you charge him? I'm so curious oh, I because I know the car wrapping prices, man. Uh, okay, so how much how much did they charge you for that Audi? Well, it was gold, right? So it, it for sure had to be a little gold, little chrome, more. gold chrome, satin, satin gold, and then it was black as well, so, like so gold and black. Well, the like little trims of black, right? Like certain parts of black, mm -hmm. certain parts gold. But probably, average probably cost like is like four, four to six. Four, four to six, six, huh? Yeah. yeah, like something something good. But I I'm pretty sure you charge like four to six hundred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it right. No, I, I charged them, uh, bro, it was super cheap. It was like 900 bucks. Hey, man, can you wrap my car to me? <laughs> <laughs> I'll wrap it. I'll wrap it, bring it to me next week. And I still do kind of know a little bit. Yeah. Because the technique kind of just stays with you. You know, once you learn yeah. the skill, you know, you kind of. Always know it, but you always got to practice it, too, you know? Mm. It's good that you did it, though, right? Because sometimes most people, unfortunately, go down a certain path. They buy all the materials. They yeah. buy everything needed. They go, they just they just go down a certain path without knowing really what that path looks like or what yeah. that work looks like. Yeah. They make all the investment. They put all the energy. But they go, it's like getting a degree. You know, a lot of people go and study this thing for four years. Mm -hmm. And later on, they come to find out that's not what they want to do. Yeah. And, and, I mean, in a way, sometimes it's good. Because you get to see what it is. You know, you try different things. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, yeah. but uh, you know, I guess when you're going to invest in it, 
like fully with you know with a lot you kind of have to know that you're gonna have to have to put in a lot of work to make sure that it's going good you know yeah yeah you should dive in and yeah. kind of like it's, mm-hmm. it's good to dive in but like you kind of got to see too a little bit you know yeah, yeah. but um but yeah i mean i'm, I'm glad that it, i started rapping cars because then now i know you know like okay it, it's cool you know it's a cool thing to do but it probably wasn't wasn't for me you know so i kind of get that that option out of the back of my mind you know what i mean put mm. it to the side and kind of look for another opportunity mm. and then what so okay so you were doing that and then what what came to be or what happened so after that i mean i was still you know just working and then um basically uh and after that i mean just kept i kept going with the vending machine because i still had the vending machine in that period of time mm. and like uh, one car and that's it no more <laughs> no more yeah after that car <laughs> i mean after that car like i would still do like small hoods and like stuff like hood, that yeah but then I was like, uh, you know, it took a lot, especially for, uh, I mean, I didn't do it by myself. You know, my brother helped me and stuff like that, too. Like, hey, hold this piece right here while I'm yeah. doing this. But Damn, you still had to pay somebody for me. Yeah, I did. Yeah, well, my brother, I, I was like, hey, you know, you help me. Yeah, here's a little cut. Yeah. So in the end of the day, you know, we, I basically broke even or maybe not even made anything. But yeah. But it was an experience wrapping it. You know, after, yeah. after wrapping it, because it was gray. It was a charcoal gray. Mm-hmm. And he wrapped it like a sky blue. Like a, so it was a totally different color. So after wrapping it, I was like, man, it was came out pretty clean, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it did it, it take a lot of working to it. Yeah, it ain't like Need for Speed Underground where you just be changing the click. Yeah, it's not color. just the click. <laughs> button, you know, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, it just, it's a little time consuming. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. More than time consuming. But after that, I mean, I just kept going with the vending machine. Mm. Just kept going with the vending machine, you know, bought another one um, at the same location, you know, one for drinks, one for the, the snacks. So I just kept it going. And then all that money from the vending machine, you know, I kept saving it until the uh, opportunity came where I wanted to start doing the, the embroidery because I was like, you know, that's that's fully, like fully custom, design, creative kind of stuff, you know, so. It's not just passive income in a way, but you still got to have work. How, how much does yeah. the vending machine make, man? Because I've always seen, I see them everywhere, but, you know, yeah. you never really I mean, see the business side of things. I definitely like, have seen so many TikToks, so many things of all types of money. Yeah. But. Al Chile, how much? A vending machine, like a good vending machine. Decent vending machine. Like a like a decent vending machine. Part a like month. How much you make a month on the vending machine? A month. Oh, so n- you're asking how much it costs to buy a vending machine, or how much does it make? Does it make? Yeah. So that depends on like the spot too. Like, mm-hmm. um, it's more on the spot because there's a like if you go on offer up and you put a vending machine, there's people selling their their routes like. Not just their vending machine, but their vending machine with their location because they know that location brings in a, a lot number. of, yeah, a certain number. Mm. So they kind of, they'll say like, uh, you know, you you got to buy the vending machine, but the reason why it's this price is because you have this, this location. Yeah, it's already set up here. Here. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. So a vending machine could probably pull in like uh, maybe like 200 bucks every two weeks or so, or maybe 500, you know, it kind of depends on like what it is. Average two to, two to five. So... Uh, Every uh, every week, every two weeks, you said probably like uh, like yeah, between like two to five hundred every like two to three weeks or so. So let's say anywhere from like three to six hundred a month. Yeah, a month. So basically a year. What is that? Like? Maybe like about four thousand bucks at most. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't take much effort to fill and up either. And yeah, yeah, and that's just uh, that's just one. You know what I mean? So if you have a whole route, you know, you have another another vending machine at another location, one here, one there. You're just kind of you know, collecting the money, refilling it, collecting and refilling it. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, so after that, uh, after saving up that money from the vending machine, that's where, you know, the, the idea of the embroidery, the embroidery machine came up. And at first, the reason why I had the idea to do the, the embroidery mm-hmm. was because we were going to embroider on the side of the mattresses, oh, okay. on the side of the mattresses. So that was, that Are was going to put you like your logo or the, uh, the company logo. So yeah. the the company logo where we're gonna put on the side of the mattresses along with the uh, the pillows and you know everything that had to do with the foam and the fabric, mm. just put the name of the company, name of the company, and we're doing that when we first got it in. We, that's what that's all we we're doing, just just nothing yeah. but the mattress covers and and then hats with the company logo for the employees. Yeah. So yeah. that that was like all that we we're doing for a few Your months. Gear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, and then after that, you know, that's when I made the Instagram for the embroidery because I didn't. I had the the machine for a period of time without making the Instagram. Mm. So I had it just strictly to do that. Yeah, yeah. just for your guys' mm. business. And then when I made the Instagram so it wasn't it wasn't like a business tool. It wasn't it was just more of a 
a tool for your dad's business, but it wasn't so much a money making tool. In in a way, yeah, because he was a because yeah. it was a it was a separate thing from from that business, mm-hmm. because all the money also basically yeah all the money that it I was had an raised expense that. at that point. It was just an expense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because all the uh, all the money that we had raised that I had raised from the vending machines, that's what I used to buy that that uh, that embroidery machine. What was your vision when you bought it? Because it sounds like it was just expense. Yeah, I mean, at first I was like, you know, like I had to think about it because it's not like buying a, uh, you know, uh, uh, like a spool, not a spool, but uh, it's not like buying the wrap for a car, you know, Mm -hmm. it's it's, it's way more. So it was a a serious investment that I did have to think about, Mm -hmm. make sure that it was the, the, you know, the route that I wanted to go with. And um, after, you know, thinking it, you know, looking at the numbers and all that stuff, I figured that, uh, well, we're going to have the, you know, the work, which is the mattresses, you know, yeah. pushing out the mattresses and stuff like that. So I figured in a way that it couldn't, I mean, it couldn't necessarily affect, like it wouldn't be a bad investment in a way. It was like your dad paying you every time that you guys did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that. it was, so it was, so that's what I was saying. It was like a whole separate thing from, mm. from the, from the, uh, the, the mattresses. So I'm assuming other people around there were also like, hey, can you get us some yeah, stuff? Yeah, like, hey, and that's kind of where I started getting the idea, like, hey, you know what? It doesn't just have to be the mattresses that mm. we could embroider, you know? We could do hats, you know, jackets. You know, somebody brought me the 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 jacket that we made with the company logo, and they're like, hey, can you put my name on here? So, like, little yeah. stuff like that. Um, and then after that, you know, I made the Instagram, and then that's where, that's where uh, you know, we figured out, you know, you could do hats, sweaters. And not just for companies, for brands, brands that want to start off to do their own brands and stuff like that, you know. Mm. So it was a, it was like a whole separate, like a whole separate thing, you know. Um, the, uh, like for just for like an example, it would start off with like ten mattress covers, you know. Like he'll tell me, hey, you know what? I need ten mattress covers uh, by the end of the week, and then we're just doing boom, 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 mm. and then just write the invoice, just write the invoice. And the invoice was just like on paper, you know. We didn't have like a QuickBooks or anything set up yet. Yeah, yeah. You know, so how how was it uh, giving an invoice to your dad? Hey, man. I know. <laughs> it, at first, it felt kind of <laughs> weird. I was like, you know, I'm giving him an invoice, you know. But it was a, uh, it was a, uh, you know, the the work kept going. You know what I mean? The work was always flowing, so that's why it seemed that it wasn't necessarily a a, a bad investment. You know what I mean? Because it was mm-hmm. it kept going. <clears throat> but um, now people love their beds, man. Yeah, shoot, I'm I've I've been looking for like a year and a half for like a temper pure, you know, those the ones that lift up and yeah, all that yeah, stuff, yeah. the friends, man. So definitely gonna need to uh, get one. Yeah, we got you. We have to podcast. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, but um, but uh, but yeah, so that um, you know, after doing the 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 mattresses, I mean, we're still doing the mattresses. You know, it kept going. Yeah, it kept going. It was the constant work. Yeah. Um, and then. I made the Instagram for the for the company for the embroidery company probably about maybe about like three four months after I bought the machine. Were you already breaking even by then, like with what your dad gave you in business and stuff? Because I'm assuming you 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 like financed the machine or something. Yeah, it's yeah. not cheap, right? Yeah, it's no, like no, it's not. It's not. It's like forty th- twenty thousand, yeah, thirty thousand, or something like that. Am I yeah. wrong? I have no clue. But yeah, yeah. I mean, somewhere. you have to you have to finance it unless you want to pay everything cash. You know what I mean? But but um. Were you already like at a point where at least monthly payments wise you're kind of breaking even or yeah breaking even a little bit you know and uh, at first it was like man you know we're not making you know I'm not making any money but at yeah. least we're breaking even and the work was going that's that was what I kept telling myself you know the work's going and then um and then yeah and then that's where I started the Instagram like three four months after yeah and then you know I started off with like my family you know like hey can you do me a few hats uh, my cousin hey you know can you do me a, a sweater with this logo. And then from there, you know, just kind of by word of mouth, you know, their their family, friends, their friends, and stuff like that. And then, um, and then I remember the first uh, the uh, the first order that we got, it was like like twelve hats, like yeah. twelve hats. And then right there, I was like, oh, you know, we could start getting a rhythm going with with hats and stuff like that, you know. Mm. And that's kind of what we were just charging at that point for just the embroidery, right? Yeah. yeah. People brought their hats. People brought everything to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And th- and it was a whole process too. I mean. When I first got the machine, it was just, it was sitting there for like a couple, like a couple weeks because I didn't know how to do embroidery. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah, it was yeah. something I didn't totally. Even use it. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, like you would go on YouTube how to like how to use embroidery machine, but there's different different brands, different machines and stuff like that that have different functions. Mm. So it was a whole like a whole whole like a whole other thing to learn basically. Yeah. 
Yeah. How did you how did you learn how to use it? Was it just based on YouTube? Or? No, 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 no. So I'm assuming well, these brands, I was assuming they would probably bring somebody out to show somebody how to use it if it's a big yeah, investment yeah, like that, yeah, right? Yeah, that's what it is. Cause they, yeah. they train you. So when oh. you buy the machine, you know, they, they train you. Um they give you, you know, like the the like the book so you could service your machine, like oh. service it, maintenance yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. So they, they walk you through it, but uh, you know, it. once they finish showing you, you're kind of stuck to you're like, Hey, I forgot what he told me. I forgot how to yeah. do this or all the little so, things, huh? So I would, you know, the guy that trained me, I would text him like, Hey, how do you, you know, how do you do this again? You know, I'll be stuck for like 30 minutes trying to figure out how to put like the thread in the certain location that's supposed to go. Mm. But, um, but yeah, so that, that was the whole process too. You know, uh, getting the machine was, you know, the first thing, but then learning how to use it was another thing, mm. you know, because, um, because, you know, you got to make sure the work comes out with the logo it's supposed to be, you know, the colors, all that stuff, you know, so it's yeah. a whole, it's a whole nother thing, like a whole nother skill, you know, it's a skill set. It's, it's painful to learn sometimes new things like that, right? You had, it's painful to make a big investment, but sometimes out of your pain can come your purpose. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you just got to keep on, uh, keep on working and then eventually another opportunity will come up and then another opportunity and then you kind of start getting the rhythm a little bit, you know. Yeah. That's awesome, man. And then, like, I know you fast forward, right? A lot of these started doing hats. You started doing jackets. You started doing yeah, everything, huh? Yeah, so hats and stuff like that. And, and it's, it was all, like, a learning curve. Sick. You know what I mean? Like, all, like, uh, like I said, you know, the first store that we got, I remember it was, uh, it wasn't even, it was either, like, eight or 12 hats. I believe it was, it, or it might have been six hats because, you know, your machine does six at a time. Mm. Um, and uh, I remember trying to do lo- the order of the six hats. I had messed up, like, 20 hats trying to do the six hats oh uh-huh. so like a part so and it was like little stuff like oh i forgot to do the flip on the logo mm-hmm. or i forgot to uh i forgot to punch in this color code for this or yeah they'll all come out one color yeah or reverse yeah or like. it, <laughs> yeah and i was like man what, you know what am i doing wrong yeah, or you know co- the, this order's costing me more than it's making me yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 and and at that point i was like you know it's, it's costing more but i still had to get the work out to the guy you know yeah so you know, after it was all a learning curve, just kind of learning how to use the machine, but then also how to set up the the hat or the the sweater onto the machine. Because yeah. you know, the machine the machine does the logo, but yeah. it's more in the setup, more in the setup of you have to get it ready for the machine. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because the machine just does the work, but you just have to make sure it's set up properly. That first client, bro, must have been interesting. He probably walks in and you're like, "Here, bro, I owe you like a hundred and thirty bucks, you know, for the yeah. for these six hats bro. <laughs> and yeah. all the other hats you brought me." Yeah, That's so funny. it was a, it definitely was a, a learning experience. But once you get it, like I said, you know, once you get it and you practice it, you know, you learn more things. Yeah. Especially right now, I'm still learning more functions, how to use the machine, you know, like all like certain things that I didn't know was possible to do on the machine, you know. Mm. But yeah, it's all a, all a learning curve. That's sick, man. Then I mean, obviously, your Instagram started popping. Other people, I saw you. I mean, you your page, man. For those of you who don't know, we'll put the page down below, but. Check out his Instagram, man. You got all types of grupos. You got businesses Grupo. all mm-hmm. over. You got s- our celebrities hitting you up. You got you're doing things for everybody, <coughs> man. How did that come yeah. about? How did how did I you mean, went from your backyard type of like you know just family and close friends to like yeah. getting attention or as a young guy too, yeah, like kind of starting to work with bigger people. I mean, it kind of starts off with uh, with one in a way. You know, I remember mm-hmm. um, doing uh, some hats for for a grupo right for a grupo and then you know they kind of see the hats and then somebody else is like hey you know what i want some some hats for my grupo too mm. and then somebody else wants to start a brand and then it kind of just starts building up you know what i mean D- your first few hats that you did for grupos and stuff did you just do it and was like hey bro check it out like check out my stuff or were did people hit you up or yeah so like I, I would do a like a sample like a free sample first like hey you know here's a you know this is our work let me know if you're interested you know we'll get you some free hats or some you know some hats um you remember who the first group was you guys it was a uh, yeah, i'm trying to remember because i was i was actually doing some hats for a group right now too that's why i'm like trying to think but the first hats well the first order that i was telling you about those six hats that i messed up 20 trying to do those six hats yeah um it was for a promoter for grupos mm. so it, i guess from there it, it went from the you know that promoter like hey i have a guy that does hats and then he told the grupos that he was promoting. And there were smaller grupos, you know, smaller grupos here and there. But but all that, you know, it starts to kind of get you in a, in a, in a rhythm, you know. Mm. And then kind of word, word of mouth and everything. Mm. 
but was some some light. It was probably like you know, Angel del Villar, you know, just. <laughs> 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 nah, I wish, I wish, but no, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where it started because yeah. the the grupos, the grupos are are the ones that uh, because you know they always need hats to give out stuff like that. Yeah, they and that's kind of where it started, you know, with the with the grupos, and then after that, you know, the brands, mm-hmm. the brands would see that you do hats for you know for a certain grupo. And then they're like, oh, you know, he does hats for them. You know, I want to try out the quality on, on how he does the hats and stuff. Mm. Yeah. How was it being like a young entrepreneur, right, in, in, in the world we live in? And obviously, I've personally been a believer that age doesn't matter because mm-hmm. uh, maturity doesn't come with age and everything else that comes mm-hmm. with it is not an age thing. Mm-hmm. But being a young entrepreneur, like how did you manage all the distractions in the world as you're hustling, you're making some money, and I'm sure, you know, you got some attention too, you know. How did you manage all that around your life? I mean, you kind of just have to have a, uh, you know, like a, I guess you could say like a, like a goal, you know what I mean? A goal where you want to where you wanna be in the next 10, 15 years, you know. And mm-hmm. if that's, if that's uh, you know, starting a business, then, you know, you got to figure out, you know, what do you like and what business to start and stuff like that. And if, and if your goal is to become, you know, a, a pro athlete, you know you you got to do the work to become the pro athlete you know practice you know make sure everything's good because mm. I, I i actually used to play um i used to play baseball for like okay. probably like uh like 15 no maybe not maybe like 12 like 12 13 years like oh, 12 wow. 13 years yeah travel ball you know i used to go to nevada um arizona mm. you know travel you know travel everywhere to like play in high school outside of high school as well or inside? uh outside of high school outside okay, of high school, okay. Yeah. what high school did you go to uh, Downey, Downey High School. Oh, you went to Downey. Okay. Yeah, I went to Downey High School. Well, my first year, I actually went to uh, St. John Bosco. Yeah, St. Okay. John Bosco. Yeah. And then after my freshman year at St. John Bosco, that's when I transferred to Downey. Because most of my family went to Downey, you know, my cousins and stuff like that. But, yeah. But, uh, so, yeah, so the reason I was saying I used to play baseball is because that was my first, like, I always wanted to be a pro athlete, you know, mm. play baseball. But then um, kind of thought about it, you know, there's there's so much – you got to go to, you know, to become that pro athlete. It's not just like, hey, I'm good at baseball, you know, I yeah. could become a pro athlete. You got to do a lot of more and more and more work, you know. The baseball part is probably like 20%. Yeah. 20 or 30%. Yeah. I basically play soccer too. It's uh-huh. just play for university and it's the same thing. I know yeah. What you mean. It's a whole, you know, it's a whole process, you know what I mean? You got to do showcases. You got to do, uh, you know, you got to, first you got to, you know, have the, the skills to be able to get the attention and then, after you go to the showcases and stuff like that, you know, and it takes a lot of work, you know, it's not easy. But after that, you know, I kind of thought to myself, you know, um, I had to be more, a little more realistic, you know, like, hey, you know, um, maybe, you know, being the pro athlete is not, uh, you know, it's possible, but it's probably not, you know, not feasible. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a, it's not a, it's not an easy route as it may seem, you know what I mean? So then that's yeah. kind of where, you know, I started going into, you know, uh, owning my own business. Starting you, something. You like the struggle, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. like to struggle. Yeah, yeah. I like. I, like I mean, that's the. That's sometimes you know how you how you learn too. You know what's the. Yep. What's the struggle, and it's all a learning curve. You know, just. Yep. Going through it and then learning from that and then just changing to. To uh, you know to be able to do better on the next one, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome because yeah, most people don't embrace the struggles, mm-hmm. and I think that's uh, most people like it. And it happens, right? We all go through things as we're trying to get to where we want to get to. Yeah. But some of us grow through those things. Yeah. And we become who we're supposed to become. And it sounds like that's what happened to you. Yeah, it's about just, you know, growing through those things. Like you said, you know, you have to, you know, you have to go through through a little bit of struggle so you could kind of see, you know, like the, you know, the, the mistakes, you know, where the mistakes could happen. Mm-hmm. And then you learn from them, you know. So it's you kind of do have to go through that to be able to, move on to like the next step you know what i mean yeah move on to the next step yeah and i'm sure victory tastes much better that way too huh? yeah it does because you you, f- you know you feel like you you earned it you know what i mean like you went through it and you you earn you know that part of the victory and then you just keep going you know on to the next one yeah on to the next one if somebody that's watching right they're starting a business starting something that they feel passionate about like mm-hmm. What are like one or two things that you would say that are things to avoid when somebody's starting a business or starting a brand or something? Because I know you've done fairly well in that sector. To avoid like certain things to avoid when you're when you're first starting, right? Yeah. Um, so that's a good question, right there. I mean, I guess uh, 
when you're starting a business, you kind of have to, if if you want to start, you know, an, uh, a legit business, you kind of have to see it as a, as a business and, and not a side thing. You know what I mean? Like mm. you kind of have to go kind of don't, I guess, don't think about it in a way where, um, where it's kind of, you're just doing it for fun in a way, you know, like if you want to, if you want to take it seriously, you have to, uh, you know, take, take the certain routes and, and keep it separate. You know what I mean? Keep it separate. You know, there's always time too to have fun and stuff, but once you got to get to work on, on your business, you know, it's your business, you know, you have to kind of be, uh, uh, so passionate avoid, about your avoid treating it like a hobby. Yeah, I guess avoid treating And you know, there's certain mm-hmm. businesses that are, that are, um, you know, like, uh, or there's certain things that you, you know, like you could have a side hustle, you know, there's not, nothing wrong with a, with a side hustle, but if you want to take it to the, you know, a further step, then you have to avoid thinking of it like as a hobby and you have to kind of put more effort into it than what you have already done. You know? mm, that's on the, on point, man. On needle point. <laughs> on needle point. On needle point. On point. Right. What else? Well, any other things that you would um, suggest to avoid that to avoid somebody, any other things to avoid? I mean, at first, I guess to avoid is uh, when you're first starting, maybe to uh, kind of um, like I guess in a way, don't necessarily like uh, how do you put this into to where it makes sense? Like, like when you're first starting off, it may seem like if you're making a profit at first, but I guess to avoid is thinking that all of that is profit because you have to mm-hmm. also take into consideration that there's a there's other costs that you kind of forget about too. There's other mm-hmm. costs that you kind of forget about too. So you kind of have to, you know, maybe if you're, I don't know, like uh, buying something five bucks, selling it for ten bucks, all those five bucks, you know, it, it, it's not all profit. You know, there's there's some other cost in there that you kind of got to break down too. Mm-hmm. So I guess uh, to avoid what to avoid is um thinking that just by seeing the the cost and whatever you're selling it at, you know, whatever that profit is is not all profit. You know. So you kind of got to set more aside too, for you know for reinvesting, you know not all of that is profit. You know you can't just go out and then spend all that. You know what I mean? You got to have yeah. a little bit more saved up. That's true. Too many of us don't budget. Yeah, but oh, that, that, that budgeting. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Like budgeting, knowing your knowing your costs. You know what I mean? And everything, mm. labor and the true cost. Yeah, right. Not cost. just not just the cost of making yeah. the item, but yeah, because you know you probably yeah. see like the, you know the the simple you know the the cost and the, the selling price but you know that in between is not it's the is the gross profit you know it's not the uh, the net profit mm. so true mm. so true how did you come to learn that lesson sounds like a that lesson and i've ex- from my experience that lesson is only learned uh-huh. the way i learned it yeah was when I, by background my dad had a car dealership yeah so i grew up in like my dad had car dealerships yeah. in bell gardens for like 40 years man so mm-hmm. um the way I learned that lesson was in college. I mean, I was working since I was like 13 selling cars with him till like I was yeah. in college. But then I'd have three, four thousand dollars that I would make that month. Yeah. And at the beginning of next month, I'd look in my pocket and I had like 200 bucks, 100 yeah, bucks. Yeah. And you're like, where did it go? Where did everything go? Because there's so many little costs. You know what I mean, so many little yeah. costs that you kind of don't think about. Yeah. They end up adding adding up at the end and and it takes away from, from the profit, you know. So the, whatever you thought was profit is not actually, it's not actually profit, you know. Yeah, it's a little bit less. There is profit, but not not all of it. You know? Did you have a similar experience, or what? What happened? <laughs> I mean, um, in in uh, in a way, yeah, you know, because yeah. in a way, like like I said earlier, you know, we're breaking even, mm. but then once you really break it down, you know, all the way to the end, you know, you're kind of losing money in the end. You know, you're not really mm. breaking even. You're probably losing money, mm. so you kind of gotta really break down the numbers in a way. And I mean, part of it too was, um, you know, in school because I, I went to to uh, Cal State Long Beach. Okay. Stu- to study business so nice um i was i was still in school while i was doing that embroidery thing so i kind of was able to you know learn it in school and then kind of apply it to the embroidery as well i know a lot of people to say that well a lot of people would argue that mm-hmm. school doesn't teach you much yeah and, you know i guess I, a lot of the professors have never really done what they're teaching you know what's yeah your, mm-hmm. what's your take on that do you think that was the case here or do you think it actually helped you what classes helped you yeah, and if somebody wants to get into business, what classes do you think actually helped you? I mean, there's a, uh, it's kind of what you take from those classes, I guess you could say, because like there, there's going to be a lot of classes that you take that you feel that are probably not going to benefit you, yeah. and they probably won't benefit you. It's probably like a, I don't know, like a, a certain class that is just not in your interest, right? 
and it probably won't benefit you in a way, but it's what you take from that from that class. You know, it could be one thing that you take. It could be a like an inspirational quote or something that you mm. take from that class. And then another class you could take something else, you know. Mm-hmm. Something that you learn about like the profit, or revenue, gross profit. Take mm-hmm. that from here and then you take that from there. And then everything that you take, the little things that you take, you know, that helps you to to move forward into what you want to do, you know. Mm. If you don't go to to school, um you don't kind of you're not able to kind of take those things from everybody, you know. Mm. From er- from one of those little classes, you know. It's more like just being exposed to the, uh, to, to everything, kind of. Because you know when you're young, you have to kind of be exposed to a lot of things and see from certain classes, you know what, you know. Just like little different stuff, you know. What I mean, you kind of got to be exposed to it, and then you take, you take what you know what you need, and then you move forward. Mm. That's spot on. That's spot on. No, I totally get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, I totally get that. And do you think? Do you have any mentors in your life? Who do you like? Who, anybody you look up to, or I mean, uh, like mentors. I mean, I mean, for example, like my family. My family, they uh, they they support me a lot. So they they teach me little things here and there. You know, like hey, you know, try doing this. Especially, especially my dad. And you know, my dad has um, you know, my dad's friends that also have businesses. You know, they uh, you know, they they teach me little things here and there. You know, and that and all that kind of helps. You know, all that support helps to be able to um to kind of learn from your mistakes and then kind of fix it in a way you know mm. but um i guess uh i guess um like for a mentor i mean i probably couldn't think of one right now but mm-hmm. is there anybody you look up to that you kind of were like man i hope i someday do some work for this guy or he sees my stuff and Oh, like a he hits me like up, a, <laughs> like a like a client for like hats and stuff. Any, anything anybody I mean, you look up to? I mean, uh, I mean, I I I, uh, I look up to a I guess you could say like like pro athletes too. I guess in a way, mm. for example, um, who's your favorite baseball team? Oh, the Dodgers is not even a question. The all Dodgers, right, all right, Dodger fans, Dodger fans, go below. <laughs> yeah, yeah, show some love. Um, I'm sure we're gonna have some broken hearts. I know we get probably got some angel fans yeah, here too. Yeah. So. There's for sure some angel fans. Yeah, yeah. Dodgers though. Dodgers, Dodgers. Away. Yeah. We're even drinking blue Gatorade. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why I chose the blue one. No. <laughs> um, no, I mean, uh, I guess like for example, like uh, have you seen the the mural at our shop? The, the mural. With the I haven't been to your shop yet, man. Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. You gotta go. You gotta we're go. gonna go. We we went to the previous place. Yeah. Well, we're gonna go to this new place. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta stop by the new one. But I mean, like for example, right there we have uh, Urias from the Dodgers. Okay. Uh, we have Kobe and Canelo. You know, we have those three porches right there. So I guess in a way, we're gonna have to have Canelo and Urias come come out to the shop, check out. Yeah. Take a little selfie there. A little with the selfie shop. with the with the mural, huh? Yeah, hundred percent. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, mental. Some of your inspirations. Yeah, some of my inspiration, I guess you know, and. Uh, and my parents too, you know, my my mom and my dad, you know, they give me uh, inspiration and support, so I I look up to them as well, you know. But um. But yeah, I guess that's that's about that. No, it's awesome, man. I mean, what what's next for, for you at Needlepoint? Or wh- what's the goal? What's what's the vision? Where do you see your your company being in the next three to five years? What what do you want to accomplish? Because I know, most of us don't think that far, mm-hmm. and if that's unfortunately that's the problem that I feel like I see because. Growing up, we're always taught, what, hey, go to school, get good yeah. grades, and then, hey, wh- what do you want to do for a living? Like, oh, you yeah. know, what kind of job do you want to have? But we're never really taught the most important question, which is how do you want to live? Mm-hmm. You know, like if you want to yeah. have this kind of lifestyle, well, there's only certain career paths, certain businesses that can mm-hmm. help you get to there. Yeah, right? exactly. But, but you know, for yourself, like, you know, working backwards, what vision do you see for yourself or for your company? Do you even see yourself being that company in the next five, ten years, twenty years? Like, what do, what have, what have, being a young, young entrepreneur? What have you thought about? I mean, uh, I mean, for like, I guess the the vision for the company. I mean, what we want to do is, you know, like everybody, we want to be the the best embroidery shop in in LA. You know, I mean, that's that's the that's the vision. But I mean, the real goal is to to help out a lot of. Uh, a lot of brands that want to start, you know, their own brand, um, you know, help out everything, you know, be able to do everything. That That's the main, the main goal is to be able to do, you know, hats, sweaters, 
you know, like little stuff too, like little labels to put on inside of hats, um, you know, t-shirts, you know, everything, everything that, uh, that comes with starting your own brand. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I, the goal for, for Needlepoint is for, you know, somebody that wants to start their own brand to be able to come to us and, and know that we're able to kind of guide them in a way to start their own brand, you know, yeah, that we're able to do, you know, the tags and the hats and, and the, the, the seams on the inside of the hats, you know, all customization, anything that, that you would need or any vision that you have, they were able to take care of it for you and kind of push it out, you know. That's the that's the main goal, you know. And of course to um to be able to uh help out, you know, like uh you know, clients. You know, clients when they need hats for for example, like we're doing um some hats earlier today for an event that somebody had. It was a, a rush order. Um, mm-hmm. but they have the event, you know, this weekend. So, mm-hmm. you know, being able to help out those businesses with certain things like that or uh, you know, like hey, you know, I have um I have this but I'm not sure how to how to structure the logo in a way. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we wanna be able to we, we would want our clients to know that we're able to help them out with that. Help mm-hmm. them out with the whole process, you know, make making the process a little easier for them, you know. Because oh, sometimes yeah. being able to do, you know, when you hit up a, a, a shop or something, it's kind of hard, like, oh, where do I start? You know what I mean? Yeah. And our, our goal is to be able to make that easier for, for clients to be able to come to us and, and know that we're able to, you know, take them in the right direction. Well, that's awesome, man. Mm-hmm. It's funny because I feel like your vision aligns a lot to our vision here at FFC. Because mm-hmm. that's literally what we do. Like, our goal yeah. is to just empower people and businesses yeah. with any kind of solution needed for them to leverage the tax system here. Yeah, I guess, you know, in your case, it's a little bit more on the creative side. Mm-hmm. For us, it's that just to kind of help the businesses set up properly so that they can use the tax system, they can get the write offs, they can make sure they set their payroll, they set themselves on, you know, they can ha- show proof of income credit, just not have so much liability, mm-hmm. especially just kind of, you know, a lot of people just work on the fly like that. Yeah, yeah. And be able to build wealth, which is exactly. what we're all trying to accomplish at the exactly. end of the day, right? Mm-hmm. But that's cool because I, I know you yourself already have a lot of stuff set up too, huh? In terms of like like, like your business, even your business structure oh, and yeah, everything, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. You guys have your corp. Yeah, you yeah. guys. How did how, how did that come about? I mean that that uh you know that came that came after too. You know what I mean at mm-hmm. first you're kind of like you said you know, you kind of caught up in just working working you know mm-hmm. getting the stuff out you know the Instagram the the pictures and all that stuff, mm-hmm. and you kind of don't really think about how you know setting setting it up properly. You know what I mean and that kind of um, that kind of just came with you know just setting it setting it up making sure that. You had the name registered and all that stuff, you know. So, so that that was another important thing that we had to do, you know, making sure that everything was set up properly. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, that's that's the uh, that's the vision, you know. What I mean, being able to grow together with these brands and and uh, in these companies, you know, what I mean, being able to grow together, uh, that's the that's the main goal right there. Yeah. How does it feel being like? Uh, I don't know. if There's something you feel, but for us here, you know, we we have a couple thousand clients this mm. point you know we've been yeah. at this for many years now and um it's really cool to be able to see that and and i know different cultures represent different you know everybody's proud of their their heritage yeah <laughs> right yeah, yeah exactly you, you being latino as well you know i'm yeah. latino as well i'd yeah. love to say we're the number one business consultants in all of california uh-huh. and that's why we have the kind of clients and success that we have not because we're latino not because we only deal with latino because i love all t- all business owners, you know, equally every race, equally we have clients that are African American, Asian, that are Jewish, that are Latino, every everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but you being Latino too, man, how does it feel to be able to just represent, you know, yeah, and be I a mean, good example? A, good a example. lot of us, uh, a lot of us are examples. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't yeah. say everybody's a good example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But of just somebody who's who's living that American dream. Yeah. Who's who's has their vision, executed, which was the most important thing. And is having some success, you know. Th- things are happening for you, yeah. such a young age too. Yeah, and that and that's the thing, you know. You kind of want to, you know, set the uh, set the example for others too, you know. So, and that's what that's you know. It kind of goes back to being able to grow with these companies, you know. I mean, these these brands that are that are starting off, you know. If you're able to kind of show them in a way and help them out, you know, you both you both grow together, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's the, uh, you know, that's that's kind of how I, I view the the vision of the company, you know. Mm. But yeah, how does it feel so far to have? I mean, it looks like things are working over there, man. It looks like you guys are busy. Yeah, we're busy. I mean, we're you know up and down, and it it gets a little crazy at times. You know, like hey, you know this you know this customer's coming. You know the orders. You know almost done. You know 
it's kind of a, it's kind of up and down, but it's all about you know, kind of getting it organized in the way too, you know, getting everything, making sure everything's organized properly, you know, the paperwork and all that stuff. But um, I mean, how it feels? I mean, it feels uh, it feels good, I guess, to be able to. It feels good to be able to to grow with these brands. You know, that's that's kind of what's what's uh, more important to me. You know, being able to see uh, us working with these brands when they're starting off. And then seeing them kind of grow together into to bigger things, you know. Mm. You know, seeing seeing like uh, for example, just seeing a customer in a, with any size order, you know, seeing a customer start off, hey, you know what, I want to start off with uh, two dozens or twenty four hats, and then being able to grow with them eventually, and then you know those twenty four turn into fifty hats, and then a hundred hats, and you know, it kind of you kind of see the growth, and that's kind of what's important for us to mm. seeing that growth with everybody, you know, not just not just needlepoint embroidery, but every every client that we have, you know, seeing that growth is, it's what's more, more important, you know. Well, that's awesome. No, I feel the same way. That's awesome, man. And how, how does, uh, I know that's not probably, it's not you doing everything. Oh, no, no, no. I, 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 I wouldn't say that it's just all me, you know. Yeah. We, we definitely have a, uh, we have our team, you know, our team, my brother, my brother works with me. Um, uh, you know, we have family friends that work with us uh, and a few employees, you know, but we're all a team kind of working toward that same goal. And, and that kind of goes back to the organization, you know, making sure that everything is organized and making sure that everybody has the responsibility mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, the product is coming out right for the for the client, you know, for the customer. How's it like being in business with family? I, you uh, know, we, we, before you say anything, <laughs> yeah. I, I've been on both sides <laughs> where, I you know, I was working with my dad at the car dealership. And uh -huh. I some, mean, there's some pros and cons to everything. And then I've seen... I've been working as a business consultant for 10 years, seen yeah. thousands of good and bad scenarios in family. Yeah. But what was your take on that? I mean, a lot of people say, you know, like uh, like business and family, they don't they don't mix. Right. And they say they mm -hmm. keep it separate. But I think it's I think really it's uh, about making it work. You know, not you know, there's a lot of people say, oh, you know, business and family, you got to keep it separate. But but it's about being able to make it work, you know, what I mean? mm -hmm. making it work. Uh, I mean, when I was working with my dad, you know. Yeah. My it's a it's a family business, so I work with my cousins, my uncles, like it's all all family, you know, all family. My 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 brother, um, you know, my mom works right there. So I see your business partner, your brother. My brother? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he helps me out. Yeah. So he's yeah. kind of like in a way my partner. Yeah. So he helps me out. Um, he helps me out with everything. You know, mm -hmm. like hey, you know, we need more more materials. You know, we need more materials. You know, can you go pick some up, come back, or mm -hmm. you know, he helps me out a lot. So he uh. What's his name, man? Older and younger? He's younger. Younger? He's younger, yeah. Jason. Jason, hey. Brother. Shout out Jason. <laughs> shout out Jason. Yeah, he's uh, he's going to turn 18 in August. Well, this August. Well, as well, well yeah. August what, man? man August. I feel like everybody's August. I'm in August 18. <laughs> August 18. August uh, 21st. 21st, yeah, man. You're August. I'm 18. 18? Yeah. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, so a couple days. My, my boy behind the camera, August 24th. Nice. Everybody's yeah, August, huh? Bro, in my family, I have about 18 August birthdays. Yeah. So this is a festival month <laughs> for all <laughs> of us. Man. We've been partying since July. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, man. I mean, family is everything, you know? You got to yeah. make sure that that's number one. And, and that's number one for me as well, you know, family. Mm -hmm. Making sure that it's, uh, that it's uh, you know, you kind of got to see it in a way where, um, you know, they're, they're, your, they're your family, you know what I mean? And... When you're when you have family in, in business, you gotta kind of uh, you gotta you know they're your family, so you know what I mean you can't necessarily uh, you just gotta be able to kind of make it work, you know, mm -hmm. kind of make it work. It's 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 your family, you know. So so they'll you know you kind of both sides kind of have to understand that you guys are working towards a certain goal for the business, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, and if you that's make that work, yeah. that's you know if you guys are both on the same page, you know if if you you're working with your family and you guys are on the same page. You know everything will turn out. Everything will turn out fine. You know, and that's, that's, def that's definitely not an easy conversation to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I, I know I myself had a very tough, what what is called crucial conversation with my dad mm -hmm. when I wanted to go the business certain business route, which yeah. was a little different than his vision. Yeah, and for like six months there was tension until yeah until I summed up the courage to have that conversation. I yeah. guess right. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. a lot of times people hold back and then when you're living under the same roof and you're living under <laughs> their expenses, you kind of have to like you know wait yeah. what they what they say and or they had a vision for you but how was that conversation for you how did you have that com conversation with them because i know it's not an easy conversation to have i mean 
I'm assuming kinda they wanted you to be in their business or no? Who, uh, With your dad and stuff, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, my, my dad understood when I kind of wanted to branch off and start doing the embroidery. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like uh, you kind of got to you gotta meet in the middle. You know what I mean? You got to meet in the middle somewhere um, whenever you're having those conversations. You know what I mean? Meet in the middle so that you guys are both on the same page. Mm -hmm. And as long as you, you know, as long as both sides know that, you know, what the goal of the company is, you know, and you guys both work towards that goal and you stay on that path, you know, you're, you're good. You know what I mean? But uh, but like you said, you know, it's not it's not a not an easy conversation, you know what I mean? So you gotta you kinda just have to make it work in a way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Has there uh, well now you've been how how many years has you been in the business now or doing like uh, needlepoint? Uh this year is gonna be uh this year is gonna be three years. Three years already, huh? Yeah. Three. Has there what have maybe some of the obstacles that you guys have faced in the last three years and what you have to do to overcome them? Because I know I'm sure it hasn't been like us just the great oh, yeah. smooth last three years of pandemic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, it's not a, you know, it's not a, a smooth growth. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a, it's a, they're growing pains. You know what I mean? When you're, mm -hmm. when you're growing, you know, there's going to be certain, certain, uh, you know, certain down moments. But then, you know, you kind of just got to pick yourself back up. Make sure you keep going up. What are some obstacles you guys have had to face as a growing company, and how did you face them? I mean, I guess uh, in terms of like, like in the embroidery, I guess maybe like, um, kind of, um, just uh, like certain obstacles, maybe like um, making sure that I guess making sure it's you know certain things are done in in time. Mm. You know what I mean? Because kind of when you're growing, you know, you're getting a lot of, a lot of customers, quotes and stuff like that, and that's kind of a uh you know you kind of got to be able to manage it in a way manage mm -hmm. everything that's coming in um and that's kind of an obstacle that we're that we're trying to you know that we're kind of going through right now too kind mm -hmm. of making sure that uh you know with all the the instagram dms and the messages and stuff like that making sure that we're uh that we're on it you know you got to make sure that you're on it because at times it's kind of hard for uh, like for example for me if i'm answering on the dms it's kind of hard for me to, because most of the time I like to be in the, uh, in the back kind of, you know, in the production side, yeah. making sure things are getting done with the quality, making sure you know, yeah. like everything's being good. So then it's kind of uh, the obstacle that I'm that we're facing is kind of like, if I'm in the production area, yeah, you know, I kind of gotta see how to get back to the customers that you know send me DMs and stuff like that. So, um, so I'm looking kind of like for for somebody to kind of be in charge of that in a way. That's mm -hmm. like an obstacle for you. Being in charge of the DMs, you know the the whole social media. Basically. Yeah, the whole social media, because that's a that is an obstacle trying to make like TikToks and and all those videos, all the content, stuff like that. Sometimes I get caught up, you know, in the production side, mm -hmm. where I forget to, you know, take videos of the hats while they're being done, and then I, I go like two three weeks without posting a picture, you know, oh, on on yeah. Instagram. So it's a uh, hey, you already heard. <laughs> 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 if you if you are a good content creator. Yeah, yeah. I want to be a social media manager, whatever you want to call him. That's a slide into my boy's DM. Yeah, let me know. He probably he'd be he won't pitch. He'll pay good. I'm telling <laughs> you this. Give him the code FFC. He'll pay. That's an extra ten percent on your paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that. I guess that's an obstacle there. That's mm -hmm. uh, you know, like the social media, the content, the content stuff like that. Because uh, you know, it gets a, uh, it could get a, uh, it could get a. Uh, you know, there there could be like a lot of messages where you kind of like you know I need somebody in in this position to be able to get back to the messages, mm -hmm. and fast. You know what I mean? Get back to the messages quick. So I'm assuming that's where a lot of your is that like is it important? Social media is is that yeah. important right now in the business world? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. That's the uh, like ninety percent of our orders are through through Instagram, you know, through Instagram, you know, DMs and stuff like that. And then of course you know our our clients that order from us, you know, they have our our phone number, so then they they could call us and stuff like that. But a lot of the uh, the new customers that are coming in. It's mainly Instagram, Instagram, wow. Instagram, and like for example, TikTok. Like I just made the TikTok maybe about uh maybe about like four or six months ago. So I just made it, but see that's where it kind of I've kind of uh, lacking in a bit because I yeah. it's a whole another process to be able to make those TikToks and stuff like that. Yeah, and it's just kind of yeah. sometimes you don't have the uh, the time to do that. So then that's where you kind of have to set somebody up to be able to handle that. You know. Yeah, it's important to outsource. Yeah, we have my boy Mark. That's Mark. that's my boy Mark. Yeah, we. 
I thank God I we, we linked up because he's been in charge of our TikTok. Like yeah. all he does is focus TikTok. Yeah, it's because that's a whole that's a whole you know. It can make you or break you right now. Yeah, it can make some uh, people in one month to another they go viral. Yeah, exactly. You know, and so exactly. So I mean, social media it's important. I mean, it is important in today's uh, in today's world. If you're starting up a business, you know it is important. And um, get, get yourself a mark. Yeah, get yourself <laughs> a mark. Yeah. Nah, but it is it is a uh, it is important to be able to make you know that content you know and and those videos and the pictures and all that stuff because that's what's is that know, what brought you guys up initially or yeah yeah I mean because of the Instagram you know yeah you post up a picture and then you know somebody sees the quality on that picture you know they see the hats and it gives them ideas you know like oh you know how would that hat look with my logo on it mm. and stuff like that so you know it kind of gives everybody ideas of where they want to take it you know. A lot of people that want to start out brands, they'll see a picture that we post of a certain hat. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they'll say like, oh, you know, like, I wouldn't want my logo on that hat. And then take it from there. Take it from there. So it is, uh, it is important, though. It is important. Like, well, we're, another obstacle that we're facing right now is we're trying to set up a website. A website for the orders and stuff like that. Kind of have everything, you know, automated with the website. Yeah. But that's a whole other process, too, you know. I mean, like, we have to hire somebody to do the website, you know, but being able to relay the information on what you want on that website mm-hmm. and making sure that, you know, it's going to be a whole process. You know what I mean? J- just, just for all our viewers here, um, you know, here at FFC, we actually have pretty awesome website creation services. Oh, just yeah. saying we do social media marketing, we do website creation and, uh, we do a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. We identified that most of our clients needed the same things. And yeah. so feel free to give us a call. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Slide into our DMs. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh, we've done some pretty cool websites. Yeah. Check out our website. I'll show it to you after the you know after the podcast. It's it's www.familiafariasconsulting.com for those of you who have never seen it. But we got a pretty yeah. cool website guy, and uh, you know he's done a few websites for some of our clients who have been very happy. And and but definitely that that makes sense, especially yeah. when you're going the e-commerce route. Yeah, it's because it's e-commerce. You know what I mean? You have yeah. to have everything set up for that. You know? Yes, sir. You know what I mean? That's the, that's the way. No, that's sick, man. I mean, I mean. You're young, right? When mm-hmm. I, I really, I really respect you, man. I admire you because I, I was very similar in the sense of you know, ever since well, I grew up in an entrepreneurship family too. So I, you kind yeah. of are, yeah, you know, born well in a way, not born that way, but you kind of see both sides of the coin, right? You see what working. My mom, she's worked eight to five all her life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, in her case, damn, like four a.m. to like four p.m. all her life because she works in a hospital, and you're like, damn, okay, do I want to live like this or? You see, like, yeah. somebody being their own boss, they probably work crazy-ass hours, but yeah, if they don't want to go to work, they don't have to, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and so... And that kind of goes back to where you're talking about setting the uh, the example, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Kind of the uh, the motivation for others to yeah. do the same thing, you know? Because uh, my family, um, you know, we have a lot of entrepreneurs in my family, too. Like, uh, I have cousins, like, for example, that do the eyelashes and, you know, all that stuff, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. my brother does the... Uh, my brother Jason, the one that helps yeah. me out, he also does uh, detailing. Okay. Detailing, you know, okay. Uh, JC JC detailing. JC detailing. Hey, we'll throw his at. Yeah, throw the ad in there too. So how about the? You said you had cousins who have lashes and stuff, huh? Yeah, lashes and like everything. You know what I mean? So it's like, uh, it's like, uh, you know, our whole family is, uh, you know, they're they're into to you know certain things, and we all kind of help each other. You know. Yeah. We all kind of help each other with the content and and all that stuff. You know, so mm. you know our our family, man. You know, we're you know I'm That's extremely it. grateful for all the support. You know from my family, you know, and, and helping them out as well, you know, in certain things, you know, giving them certain pointers and then they give me certain ideas and kind of just bounce ideas back and forth. That's sick, man. That's yeah. sick. How is it that you guys, um, well, be right. There's a lot of families who, and, and people in the family that sometimes they see each other as competition mm-hmm. instead of collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of, you kind of have to see it in a form where you, it's more collaboration, you know, not necessarily mm-hmm. competition because, you know, if you if you really wanted to, you you couldn't have all the customers in the world. You know, so it's yeah. like you gotta be able to collaborate in certain ideas and stuff like that. You know, yeah, it's more, and then that helps you grow. That helps you grow. You know, and it helps them grow, and you guys grow together. Mm. Well, shout out to all the primos and the primas that are hustling right now in the family. Yeah, you know, definitely throw their ads there. Throw too. their ads in there too. You know. Yeah, no, no. Hopefully, if if as they're doing good, man, we'll have some more people on the podcast for sure. Yeah, but yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. 
who are some of your uh, i mean I, I know it's people you know see the page they see uh, every kind of artist they see brands labels working with you everything man mm -hmm. who are some of i mean i'm sure you have favorite and not, maybe let's not rephrase it this way maybe i'm sure you love all your clients yeah who are some of the coolest course cool, one of the coolest clients you have man i mean uh i, I mean there's a lot of them there's yeah there's a lot i mean um, you know we love all our clients you know all our clients are they're great clients you know we love working with them um any interesting client or they like client they were just like damn this is so cool when i got a chance to work with them uh i guess uh like for example like um like for example uh like what did i say um like when we first started when we first started you know i kind of seen these brands already kind of going so um i guess uh i guess uh for example like dandy right mm -hmm. like for dandy just for an example um dandy uh we uh we hit him up on instagram you know mm -hmm. a, a dm you know we i i reached out to him mm -hmm. and then uh he i think he reached out to me like uh, a few days after you know like hey you know let's i want to try out your work and um uh, and then shout we shout out to my boy leo yeah shout out to leo shout out dandy hats um he uh you know like he uh you know he gave us the opportunity to work with him so you know from there you know we we you know we started doing hats for him and and you know, doing different things, different hats, different, you know, uh, different hat styles, different logos. Mm -hmm. So at that time, uh, I think Dandy had probably like about 8,000, 9,000 followers. Yeah. Like 8,000, 9,000 followers. So, so landing, like uh, being able to work with him, I was like, oh, you know, this is cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, kind of seeing him, seeing him grow too, you know, seeing him grow to now, I think he's like at 25K, for example. Yeah, yeah, just on IG, yeah. So it was like, uh, it was like, man, you know, we worked for them. Maybe not from the beginning, but we're mm. able to grow with them. You know, mm. same thing with JL Hats too. JL Hats. Uh, hey, shout out to the compa Jorge. We're yeah. actually gonna do a podcast with him com coming soon. Actually, coming real soon. We're gonna do a podcast with him. We gotta gotta come come down from wherever whatever Sierra he's in right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, yeah, like for example, we started working with him too. He think he had maybe about eight hundred, you know, nine hundred followers. Um, and it's not so much about the followers, you know, but, you know, when they're barely starting and we worked with him when he was barely starting mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, you know, he, uh, being able to see that growth where, you know, they, they go on and they start doing other things, you know, like for example, the photo shoot and the videos that he was doing. Yeah. Um, compa Jorge has been, yeah, he's been going all in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, like I said, that's, that's what's more important for, you know, for us, for Nino Point and Body, seeing those, being able to start with these brands. Yeah, and take them to you know take them to another level. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. And not only Jay and Dandy, but you know, um, uh, Gallo Fino. You know, we we're talking yeah. about him earlier. Gallo Fino, yeah, uh, KTD, um, Church of Dirt. You know, there's a whole bunch of we. You know, we love all our clients. You know, what I mean, they You know, the list will go you you know, on and on. Love all you guys. Um, and you know, we're we're grateful for all our clients as well too. You know, everybody. Yeah. You know, whatever size order it is. It's one piece, two pieces, 12, 100, yeah. 200, whatever it is, you know, that's why we don't, uh, that's why we don't have any minimums. Uh, like, for example, that's a, that's another thing too, you know, a lot of shops, they have minimums and stuff like that. And, uh, I feel that, um, without setting up those, those minimums, you know, not setting them up, you're able to give opportunities mm. to people that are barely starting off. Cause you know, you, you never know, you know, they could start off with six and that'll take them to another level, you know, that's start very with, true. Start with six pieces and that'll turn into 12 24 so that's that's the main thing with us you know being able to give the opportunity to to grow to to something bigger you know what i mean that's awesome and that's uh like i said you know we love all our clients you know what i mean um the list will go on and on you know what i mean like i can't name all of them but those are just some that came to my head i know you're gonna love us as clients too so yeah <laughs> of we're actually well i, I was gonna show them the picture that we're doing for some samples no, we're definitely all our guests here coming to FSC Studios. We're gonna have some awesome, badass gear for you guys. Thanks to my boy here, so we're excited to see that. Yeah. But coming soon. That's right. I think we're gonna be working on it already, like next week. Yes, sir. And so you should have them ready next week. Yeah, you know, you got. I had to be on a wait list. I know um, we're not there yet to get to be working with him right away, but we gotta be. A, we got a three month <laughs> wait list. <laughs> nah, <laughs> and that's the, uh, and that's what that's and that's what I'm talking about with the, with the. Uh, with the uh, with our customers, you know, like yeah. we don't necessarily uh, uh, like favorite our customers, you know, like everybody, yeah, everybody is uh, 
you know, we, we love all our customers, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and working with all these customers, you know, giving them the same quality, you know, all around, you know, that's what's, that's what's more important, you know, the quality and the service. Cause you know, the, the quality is one thing, but you gotta have the service too, you know, mm. the service of, um, you know, being, being able to help them out, you know, like, Hey, you know, I have a pop-up event and so-and-so date, you know, can you help me out with a few hats? You know, I forgot to place the order or I, I thought I had more hats, but you know, I didn't have any being able to give that service to, you know, all our customers. That's what's important for us. Mm. That's awesome, man. And where's your location now? Do you know? I know you just changed the location. So yeah. What's it was the address? If somebody wants to come out, I know there's some of your work right here in front. Yeah, some of our hats with our logos on there. But um, what, what, what's, it's, what's uh, it's, well, it's right there in Bell Gardens. Um, mm. It's uh, 64, 46 Clara Street. Okay, on Clara Street. Then. Clara That's Street. Great. So it's from where you stopped at? Yeah. It's probably like uh, like two minutes like down the street. Okay. Yeah. And I and I saw I just saw the videos, man. But you had a festival there the other day, huh? Yeah, we who did. And who was there, man? I saw artists like uh, crazy. I saw influencers. I saw shoot. I think my grandma was there, man. <laughs> I even heard she was there. <laughs> uh, so um, Banda Imperio was there. They were, nice. They were playing. Um, Are these a lot of these people you did stuff for too? No. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like you know, with our clients, you know, we have that relationship. We like having that relationship with our clients. You know, like hey, you know, pull up. Um, we're gonna have an event. You know. And being able to have that close relationship with them, you know, that's that's what's important. So, um, yeah, like for example, Bando Imperio. Um, uh, who else pulled up? I mean, there's a lot. I mean, uh, was it La Vieja Escuela? They they, mm-hmm. they pulled up. Um, the uh, uh, Chuy Patriónica. He pulled up I too. I remember him. I yeah. saw I saw just videos. The puro puro Chuy ahí <laughs> tirando desmadre, ¿no? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the um, yeah, he pulled up. Uh, Michael Ruiz pulled up. Oh, the homie um, Mike. Yeah, it's the uh, TDP. 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 Uh, okay, Gus. okay, okay. Because um, uh, oh, Michael, ya sabes, we got a little background with Michael. Yeah, with Michael met, Ruiz. Yeah, we met at the car scene. We were uh, dude when the the Lakers won. Yeah, the Lakers won uh, this past uh, championship. Yeah, the championship was two years ago, two, two, like, like two mid years. start COVID or something. Yeah, from three yeah. years ago, something like that, like three years ago. I had my so I had my gold Audi R8. Yeah, and under it I had underglow, so uh, <laughs> it was gold. And guess yeah. what the underglow was for that day? It was gold. No, 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 it was purple. Oh, oh was yeah, the, the Laker colors. So we we're pulling up. We we're down in like a few blocks from Staples Center. Just everything was jammed. Yeah, yeah. headlock completely. And there was some, uh, I'm going to just say some uh, some interesting individuals, man. <laughs> I'm going to say that in front, in the car in front of us. Uh-huh. Convertible Mustang. Yeah. Some interesting ladies. Yeah. Having an interesting time on top of their convertible. And so we pulled up in the in the R8 and um, we were at a stop. Like, to get to three blocks, it took us like two hours. Yeah. So we were, you know, everybody was hang, hanging out, cruising and all that stuff. At an intersection, we pull up. These girls get out and they start having a good time. Yeah, one of them jumps on top of my car and starts ha- having a great time. <laughs> I'll just <laughs> leave it at that. Yeah. And then as we're pulling up, Mike's passing by, and man, Mike was turned, bro. That day he was turned up. Hey, Mike, we better have you on this podcast soon, man. Yeah, you gotta but have him on the podcast, bro. Yeah, no, my, definitely, man. He's on the list, and um, he was turned up that day. And you know, we had the Laker colors, so we all everybody yeah. was out having a great time. And then after that, we had a we went, I think we went, I don't even know if we went hiking or what, what was it, but we just had, we had a badass carne asada, bro. He brought some tomahawk steaks. Uh-huh. He knows how to cook. I, mean, like, I learned a lot about steaks from Michael Ruiz. <laughs> he's, a, he's an artist, but my right. boy knows how to cook. He knows how to cook. That was good. And then we had him, I think, uh, we had him at, at, at a house party at uh, Christmas time, at Christmas time as well and stuff like that. So it's been nice. It's been nice to get to know a lot of characters. Man. It's funny how it's a small world. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's all, all about, you know, connecting, networking with everybody, you know? Yeah. Um, making those relationships with everybody, you know. Yeah. Uh, you had those Velados good. there, too, no, I think? Oh, yeah, those Velados were there, too. They pulled up for yeah. a little bit. Uh, who else pulled up? Who else pulled up? I'm trying to think. Um, I think you had my el, el compa Leonel, también, no? Oh, yeah, Leonel. Leonel Ranchero. Yeah. Up, uh, La Nueva Leyenda pulled up. Mm. Another group one. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, all of, all of our... Uh, you know, well, not all of them, but some of them that were able to make it, our customers, mm-hmm. you know, they pulled up, they, you know, they showed support, you know, took a picture with them, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, be, that that event, you know, I kind of seen all the uh, 
the support that we really do have as a company. Mm. And that's what that's what kind of made me feel like like proud, you know what I mean? Proud of the company that we have the support mm-hmm. and that we you know, and we're very grateful and and thankful for all the support from our customers. Mm-hmm. So um being able to see that support, that kind of that's what pushes us more to to continue doing what we're doing and yep. and uh and making it better, you know what I mean? Yep. Not, not just staying at the same, you know, the same spot, making it better, making the service better, you know, the quality better, making everything better. Yeah. People don't know how much we love them. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, do. Yeah. We do. Yeah, we do. We they do. don't they 100%. don't believe us sometimes, but we do. We do. And yeah. and we don't I, I feel like you and I, maybe I don't know if you can agree with this, uh, if you agree on this or not, but we don't we don't cheapen our work. Our prices are what they are because we go so much more above and beyond for our customers. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we're not the cheapest. I hell is not I'm not the cheapest because I want to be able to do such good quality work and go beyond that mm-hmm. and feel with a do it with a good heart. Yeah. Right. And exactly. Exactly. It's all about the quality. You know what I mean? Uh, mm. A lot of times, um, uh, you know, they, they don't see the uh, the background, the background of what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like just for like an example, you know, when we're doing hats, uh, if there's something that's not with the quality that that's what, you know, what we want, you know, we'll just we'll put it to the side. We'll toss the hat. We'll do another one. You know, mm-hmm. if we lose out on the hat, you know, that's fine. You know, at least we're making the the hat. uh you know, what the quality that's supposed to have that we believe in that we should have. And if that quality is good and the customer's, you know, happy, then that's all that matters, you know, and we yeah. continue to grow together. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome, man. I know it's been like that for us too. It's been a, we've been at this studio for like, what, two, two months, two months, bro. We were working out of the house and initially years ago, I had an office in Long Beach. We were working out of an office in Long Beach and then, COVID happened, but before COVID happened, I moved, I went back home. I was like, screw it. Like, let me work from home, more convenient. I have a six-year-old son, so I was like, you know, I'll be able to wake up, take him to school, do all yeah. the things, which which has been a beautiful experience. But then we decided let's, let's, this year is our year where we're going to 100x our business, which we, we already are seeing. And it's been awesome to see the support. Yeah, yeah, the support. You know, when you see the, por- the support, it, uh, it drives you, you know what I mean? It drives yeah. you to be able to want to. Take it a step further. You know, yeah. Take it another step further, another step further. And that's, uh, I think that's what, um, uh, you know, well, that's what's more important, you know, seeing that, that support, yeah. seeing that growth, and, and that's what drives you to yeah. be able to offer more to, to your customers and future customers, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's awesome, man. And, I mean, any, any final words of motivation, inspiration, something that you'd like to tell? What would you tell your younger self? Now that you know what you know, if you were if you were to be able to talk to yourself a few years ago, what's something that you would you would have told yourself starting that journey? Um, I guess to uh, let's see, that's a good one. I gotta think about that one a little bit. But um, don't worry, we'll ed- we'll edit this part. We'll edit this part right <laughs> now. Um, I guess uh, when when you're trying to um. Like I guess to not be a little, a little. How do I, how do I word this? Like, uh, you know, when when you're you're taking advice in, and when you're bringing in, uh, when somebody's trying to give you some advice, you know, mm-hmm. try not to be like so, you know, so like like stubborn, like oh no, you know, well, I'm I'm right, you know, I mean, uh, my weight is right, you know. Sometimes you gotta be able to put your thoughts to the side and kind of see what advice it is that that somebody is, you know, telling you or some idea and, and take that and and push it together. You know what I mean? And mm. I don't know if it makes sense, but what I would tell my my, my younger self would be to uh I guess to to open your ears a little bit more. Take mm. in as much advice as you can. You know, all the little pointers that you know that, that people give you, you know, yeah. kinda kinda take it in because it only benefits you, you know what I mean? It's not like they're not like somebody's trying to tell you something to um, to lead you down, you know, the wrong path. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, when God made us with two ears and one mouth for a reason. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, I guess uh, you know, opening your ears, you know, keeping your uh, keeping your thoughts open. You know, not not being close minded. You know mm. what I mean? Not being close minded, taking in the, the that advice and taking in as much, you know, being like a sponge, taking in as much information as you can, mm. and that'll and that'll take you to another level. Yeah. No, that's 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 good. That's what little Ben, little Ben should do. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, I know what my me- one of my mentors once told me. I had, I had a similar situation when I'm Latino, man. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're we have big egos sometimes growing up because mm-hmm. we're always taught to be the macho. Yeah. And hopefully, it wasn't. I mean, I don't know if it was the same with you and your family, but you know, one of my mentors told me he's like, it's not. It comes to a point where it's not about who's right, yeah. it's about what's right, it's about what's, what's right, and what's gonna help you move forward. And at the end of the day, that's when we got to step aside, put our ego to the side, and check ourselves sometimes. Yeah, exactly. You got to be able to uh, know what it is that you're working towards, you know? Mm-hmm. Being able to put, like you said, your ego to the side and mm-hmm. know that you're working towards something. And sometimes that, that comes with being able to put your, your things to the side a little bit, you know? You got to yeah. know what's what's right, you know what I mean? You know what my slogan was this year? What? This what year? Because I did, I did, like, my challenges. I was doing challenges for, like, just health for my business for things like that just yeah. like consistency challenges uh-huh. and my slogan for the last i guess 100 and something days of the year was screw your feelings <laughs> i was like straight up screw your feelings yeah because i, I mean like, it's like who cares how you feel you still gotta get shit done anyways yeah exactly yeah. kind of you know like uh there's a there's this one quote that uh that i read one time it was um when I think it was, I think it was when your when your emotions run high, your logic runs low. Yeah. So it's like you know. Very true. You know, you you kind of you don't make the decisions that you're supposed to do because of yeah. your emotions. You know, so sometimes you gotta set your emotions to the side and and do what do what you have to do, like you like you said. Yeah. yeah. No, and I, I appreciate you coming out today because I know, and I'm sure you got orders to fill. I'm sure you got <laughs> work, and I'm sure like, you know, none of us here we we don't get paid, uh-huh. right? We're we're here you know, doing what we're doing that, so that hopefully we can bring some value to somebody. Yeah. Hopefully we can inspire somebody that's watching this. Hopefully we can uh, empower somebody with just some tools, yeah. whether it be the mindset, whether it be some foundational tools, whether it be a, some how-tos or whatever the case might be, something that they can use in their life to go towards that next step up. Yeah. Right? And I, and I appreciate you coming out today because I know... We had to reschedule this. I mean, I know we had a pretty crazy trip over the last few days in Vegas, yeah. and so some of these guys are just malas influencias, these guys that I work with. And <laughs> but shout out to all the homies that went to Vegas and we had a good trip. But, um, you know, we're here, and, 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 you know, I appreciate you coming out because I know you probably got things to do, and, and you probably didn't – I don't know if – maybe you were excited or not, but, like – To be honest, I was a little nervous because this is my first – like my first time being on a podcast, you know what I mean? Okay. Um. So I was like, you know, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect, but I mean, it's just, uh, you know, like you said, trying to inspire others, you know, having a conversation, trying to inspire others to do what, uh, you know, what they want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I thank you for accepting the invitation. Of course. I know it was a little, I know we didn't really know each other from before, so I appreciate, you know, you coming out and, and, and also, you know, taking a leap of chance with us because we're also a growing channel where something, you know, obviously I have, I, I know where we're going to be at the end of the year. We're going to be at 100,000 subscribers. And we're going to have a lot of people that watch this and learn and empower and become entrepreneurs or grow themselves in their businesses because of it. But I know we're not there yet. And I appreciate people that have and see the vision that we see so that they're, you know, they're willing to be a part of this. You know, it's been nice to, to like, we have, yeah, we have a lot of clients and, and, and we, I guess that, um, that in a way, like, I hope they never feel obligated to come. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, I, I hope they come because they want to come. But yeah. uh, we, it's been full support since day one. And every single person we've asked uh, or we've chosen to, to invite to this podcast has said yes. And so and I'm really grateful. And I, I know even, like, you know, yourself, you know, you, we, we met you a few weeks ago. And, we, I mean, I see, I see what you're doing. Like, I, I'm not, I used to be a talker. Yeah. And I'm sure all my family and friends watching this are like, damn, <laughs> he still talks too much. Yeah. <laughs> but... Over the years and over this last year, I've learned to kind of slow down to speed up and like listen more and just kind of observe. Now I'm like observing and I, I go into the room and I just observe and like I see what you guys are doing, uh, you know, at Needlepoint and I see the the vision you have and I see why it's working. Yeah. And so I want to just, just get a little bit more of an insight and, and I appreciate you accepting the invite to come here. Yeah, no, of course. I appreciate the, the invitation. You know what I mean? Yeah, anything that we could do to inspire others, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I said, starting their brand or, you know, their company, whatever it is, you know, that's that's what we're here for. Yeah. No, and, and shout out to, of course, I appreciate you know, one of my business partners here, uh, you know, that, that works with me here, Mike 
Mike Luna, I don't think you met him or you're going to meet him, but you know, we're here at a farmer's office, so we, we don't, you know, we don't, yeah, we do like business consulting, we set up corporations, we do payroll, we do all that stuff, um, and like we do web, web work, yeah. <laughs> you know, we do websites, we do all that stuff Everything. because, you know, we've, we've done it for so many years for so many clients that yeah. we've learned what's important for a good foundation for the business. You need, you need to, most businesses need to set up their corporations. Most businesses need to trademark their stuff to protect their name, protect their logos, whatever that may be. If they want to leverage the tax system, they need to put themselves on payroll. Mm-hmm. They need to, you know, there's so much money that the government is giving right now. It's, it's ridiculous. Like yeah. the, all the PPP loans, everything was all based on tax filing reports that somebody has through payroll. Yeah. And they need their insurances. Mm-hmm. Just in case something happens, you're protected. Yeah. Right. You and have so everything set up, you know what I mean? And that's, that's yeah. what's important, you know? Especially yeah. when you're growing, you know, you have to make sure that everything's set up properly. Yeah. Everything's set up properly. And so, and so that's why we're here. You know, I know my boy Mike, he handles a lot of our insurance part. We have that in-house now, too. And, and you know, and yeah, we work with a lot of other partners, and I appreciate everybody that, that works with us because we're also a brand that's trying to empower other people here in L.A. And so just wanted to say thank you to everybody that supports us. Thank you to everybody that works with us. Um, thank you again for coming and accepting the invitation. I know we had a lot of questions that, uh, that people were asking, and my, my phone has been ringing and binging and binging and binging this whole, <laughs> you know, literally uh, this whole time you've been here. So uh, I know we'll take a we'll take a little quick break, and then we'll go into some questions. All right. So definitely, just wanted to again say thank you, Ben. Uh, you know, but thank you, thank you for joining us here today. And I know, obviously, one of our favorite things to do in this podcast is you know involve the people watching at home. I know there's people that probably ask you questions all the time in your DM, how to do things, how you started, how everything, right? So uh, here in this podcast as well, for everybody listening at home, every week, keep an eye out. We do podcasts on a weekly basis. So if you want to follow us on our page at Familia Farias Consulting, you can actually participate there uh, every Monday when we do podcasts or Wednesdays. You can actually go on our story and put the questions that you want to ask special guests like Ben that we have here. So that you can get your questions answered, any curiosity, and you're like, hey, Ben, are you single? What's up? You know, <laughs> anything they want to ask, right? You're able to ask here because we want to make sure we involve you guys. We want to make sure we can add as much value as possible. So hopefully, uh, you know, we, I know we had a lot of questions come in, yeah. you know, while you were here. So I'm excited to, to go into some of those questions. But, you know, I just want to say again, thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for taking the time out. And I know you're going to be hustling probably after this as well. But, you know, thank you for, for coming out. Of course. But let's go into some of these questions. I know we actually had a we had a good amount of questions, mm-hmm. man. So I know some of these are repetitive. So sorry, guys, if I don't uh, ask the special question again uh, that you guys asked because of repetition. But I know my boy from Gallofino brand. <laughs> Gallofino? <laughs> yes, sir. He asked, he said, how is it like making Gallofino hats? <laughs> oh, man, it's super stressful. Nah, I'm just playing, bro. Hey, come on, man. You got to make things easier for my boy. <laughs> nah, nah, Gallo Fino, bro. Hey, I appreciate you giving us the opportunity to work with you. Um, you know, like 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 I mentioned earlier, you know, seeing, uh, being able to grow with you, being able to grow together as a brand and, and a company, you know, that's what uh, that's what we, what we do this for. So I appreciate the opportunity to start working with you, man. Yeah, no, the homie Jesse is super cool, man, super young. Yeah, yeah, super, super young. Super young. He's, uh, just, man, he's just hitting puberty, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kumpai just is just 18, but he's, he's making it happen. Yeah, making it happen, bro. That's what uh, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I know we, we helped him set up his corporation and uh, helped yeah. him. We're helping him do his payroll and everything. And it, it was nice, bro. It was nice to see, you know, family came with him. You know, everybody was yeah. so happy and excited. And yeah, and that, that's why we do what we do, too. Yeah, We yeah, love yeah. to see people come with their big dreams and goals and exactly. see it start come into play exactly exactly he had stopped yeah. by the shop you know uh with his family as well that's you know, right kind of showed him around everything showed him when, when they stopped by we're making his hats so he was able to see the process everybody was able to see the process of how it goes i think that day he went to your shop and then came over here huh yeah 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 i believe i believe so because that's when he had he had came down and uh, visited the shop so i believe he went right after with uh with you that's true well, well, shout out compa shout out and uh yeah, so El Fifty Hats actually asked, "This is an interesting question." He said, "What is your favorite hat design that you've made for someone?" Favorite hat design? Uh, no cap in here. No cap in here. <laughs> Working with hats, huh? Um, I mean, like Are you watching at home. 
all you clients of his. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean, uh, all the designs, you know, I can't name a favorite, just like our clients, you know. We don't have any favorite clients, you know. We love all our clients and all the logos that we do for you guys. But uh, a unique design. Anything that stands unique, out? Anything that stands out. Um, that you probably took, hey, let me get a copy of this one and just <laughs> throw it in my house, you know, throw it in my drawer. With my um, who, who asked the question? It was 50 hats? The 50 hats, yeah. The one, I mean, the one we did for him was, uh, it was the LA logo with mm -hmm. a sombrero on it. I don't know if you've seen it. More I haven't recently. yet. I haven't yet. I mean, that one, that one to yeah, me was definitely a be in touch. <laughs> that one was a, uh, it was a little unique because I mean, it was, I mean, it was a Dodgers logo, you know what I mean? But mm. we added the little sombrero to the top. And right now how uh, a lot of people are, you know, listening to what we were talking about earlier, Grupo Arriesgado. Um, mm. So they, they got like a lot of traction from that. So I think that, that was, that That's was a right, cool I mean. logo. I'm looking at that. It's like a little. little it's just like a little. A, huh? Yeah, it's like a little simple LA logo, but it has a little sombrero on the top. So it was. Yeah, okay, that was sick. something like something simple. I mean, there's a. I mean, we work with logos every day, you know. So yeah. I've, you know, I've seen a whole bunch of different logos and different ideas, and seen. Uh, <laughs> I, I know that's why. That's why I was like, you know, it's it's like a little cool, simple design. You know what I mean? Mm. But um. I mean, they bring there's a whole bunch of designs that come to my head, you know, right now. But talking about that, I know it brings my memory when we were talking earlier today about the Grupo Arriesgado concert. Oh, we yeah. won't go into any detail, but I'm gonna say is Rosarito was a movie. <laughs> For those of you that follow us, you know, at Familia Fadis Consulting, we have. I think we posted something about it, but um, we're definitely gonna have them on this podcast. It's a must. I made sure of that. We're gonna have them on this podcast. I made sure we talked to the manager. We went up there. We were. We had a good time with them when they were in Rosarito, and uh, we're going to make sure when they're out here in L.A., we get some time. So stay tuned and, and comment below who else you want to see on this podcast because we're definitely going to have some awesome guests all year long. We have scheduled some really awesome people for you guys, but if there's anybody that you guys really want to see, put them down in the podcast, put them down in the comments, put them in our social media, tag me, tag them, and let's, let's, let's get to work. You know, but, you know, really exciting times we had at the... At the Gente del Sombrero Concert. I'm going to just call it that. <laughs> but not cool, cool. So, okay, a fitty, a fitty. There you go. And uh, next person that asked uh, another question, uh, well, actually it was a saludo. It's Johnny Alegre. Johnny Alegre, yes. J.A. Hats. J.A. Hats. J. Yeah, he Hats. says big, big boss Ben. <laughs> saludos, you know, parte de J.A. Hats. So, saludos, J.A. Hats. Shout definitely. J.A. Hats. You know, we'll definitely uh, throw you out there. And, um, you know, I know, Pancho02, he actually asked, what are some of the hardest steps to grow the business that you've had? I know we kind of talked a little bit about it, mm. about your expansion and things like that. So definitely, you know, check out the beginning of the video. He talks a lot about it. Mm. But any, anything that just comes to mind, one of the hardest things to steps or hardest situations that happen in your business as you're growing? I mean, in just like in any business, being able to, uh, whenever there's mistakes that are made or, or certain things that are just not going the way they're supposed to, um, being able to just learn from them and, um, you know, making sure that you, you do better on the next one. You know what I mean? Mm. That's, that's the kind of the most hardest thing, uh, being able to, uh, to learn from it and then change it. You know, sometimes you're in the habit of doing certain things a certain way. Mm. So being able to change those habits for, for the better, you know, for well, learning from your mistakes, right? learning, Yeah, exactly. Just learning from your mistakes. Sometimes it's a little difficult, but, mm. but, uh, how do you go about that? How do you learn like, from your mistakes? I mean, uh, I mean, you you kind of have to accept that there was a mistake made. You know what I mean? And it was a, uh, mm -hmm. and it was whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the 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 mistake was made, and and you know it already happened. But you kind of have to see what caused it, and once you learn from that, you know you become a a, a, a more um, how do you say it? Just basically kind of like learning from your mistakes, kind of accepting that the mistake was made and being able to, to go from there. You know what I mean? So step one, check your ego. Yeah. Exactly. Step two, yeah, don't assess don't the know. problem. Uh-huh. Assess the problem. Step three, what just fix it and move fix forward. It and fix it and move forward, exactly. Cool, cool. Well, Pancho, saludos. Saludos. And then uh OG age OG underscore A G fifty five. He said, um, this is an interesting question. 
What's that? No, that's my boy Angel right oh, now. Is it? Oh, yeah, shit. The, that's, uh, that's our guy that did the mural. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, saludos. Definitely, we're going to need to t- talk about these walls yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah. My boy, hit me up. <laughs> your canvas right here. But he said, um, what kind of projects would be impossible and why? Like, is there anything projects. that Needlepoint just can't do? There, we could do anything. Nothing's impossible. There's a, I was talking earlier with Frank. Um, what we like to do, what, what we do is, uh, you know, when, when customers are starting their brand, mm-hmm. clients are starting their brand, uh, they, you know, there's a certain idea that they have. Yeah. And it may be not, you know, it may be a little difficult to get it exactly like that, mm-hmm. but then there's certain things that you could do to make it a little bit better. For example, just the first thing that comes to my head is there was this one logo, right? It was a, a hand holding a, a radio, right? And the antenna from the radio took up a lot of the space on, on where you can embroider on the hat because, you know, the antenna is the long part. Mm-hmm. So the logo was looking really small on the hat, but I, you know, I gave the, the client a option of tilting it so that instead of holding it like this, you're kind of holding it like this at an angle. And that made it much better. It wasn't what the client asked for at first, mm. but we kind of gave him the idea, and it kind of made it a little bit better, you know. So nothing's, nothing's impossible. Everything could be done at, at needlepoint, but uh, you know, um, we could take certain things and kind of maybe make it a little bit better. You know what I mean? Mm. So everything's everything's possible. Okay, I appreciate you answering that. Um, okay, so we ha- we actually have a few other questions. So. Damn, this one, 420, man, I can't say the rest of this on this podcast, but 420 and you end in <laughs> ZA, you know the rest. Um, they they asked, um, okay, if you had to go back, I know it was similar to the question I asked you, but um, if you had to go back and check yourself, what's one thing you would have not done as you were growing your business? Not done as I was growing my business? Mm-hmm. Uh like anything stupid that you've done in the, <laughs> the last few years that you're <laughs> like, shit, damn. Whether um, blow some money, whether it be, you know, something that held you back in business. I guess uh, putting, like, kind of maybe uh, pacing yourself in a way. You know, sometimes you want to do things a little fast, but sometimes you have to take it a little bit more slow. Kind of mm. see everything coming in, you know what I mean? You got to um, be able to make the right decision on that, you know. Um you know, sometimes, you know, you get busy, caught up during the day, and you're doing a lot of things, and you want to do everything fast, but sometimes you have to uh, take it in a little slower so and yeah. organize yourself. You know, organization is key, you know. Mm. And if you're not organized, everything is kind of just everywhere. You know? I heard this once, and it stayed with me. So sometimes you have to slow down to speed up. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You have to kind of see everything coming in slow and, uh, you know, to be able to organize and pace yourself. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I actually had, so, uh, let's see. So, Mario CR13, salud Mario. Um, he asked, what is your favorite kind of car? My favorite kind of car. I know you're a car guy, so I thought this question would be right. fit as well. That's a hard one. What That's is your favorite one. kind of car? I was like, My mom asked me that the other day, like, hey, if you could have one car, what would it be? Mm. And because, you know, we're, we're car guys, you know, you don't have one car, you know, you want that's a whole true. bunch of them. Yeah. But um, say one fleet. That's my favorite car. The fleet. The fleet. Huh? <laughs> the fleet <laughs> of all the cars. Um, what was the question again? The What is your favorite car? Your favorite car. My favorite car. Um, I would probably say. Uh, I'd probably say maybe um, like a GTR. GTR is cool. That's mm. cool. They're they're not they're not V8s. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and and I well like R34, V8. 35, 32. Probably they are 34. R34. That would probably be like the dream car right there, maybe. Mm. But there's also other like cars too that I would like, you know. Mm. Especially uh, V8s because you know I'm a big V8 guy. Mm. And that's and GTR is a totally different thing, you know. Mm. But if I had to name one, probably GTR. That'd probably be one of them. First stream car. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, GTR. Yeah, that was one of my dream cars as well, man. Especially if you've seen the Fast and the Furious movies. Yeah, exactly. You already know. There's you no. Know. You already know what's happening. Yeah, You're getting exactly. R34. It's gonna shoot some flames. It <laughs> might be blue. It might be so blue. It might be blue with some. There's some brass colored kind of rims. Some brass colored rims. And some um, stickers on the side. <laughs> little stickers. 
I think we're we're gonna have it uh, accessible 2025 finally. And that's yeah. when the 30-year yeah, yeah, band, the, the, yeah. 30 year band comes off, right? 20 year, 30, 20. I think it's 25 year band. No, it's. I think it's 25. If it's a 1999, then it would be 25. 25 year. 25 year band. Yeah, 25 year band. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We need that mess up. Everybody's been waiting. Yeah, the crazy, the pr- crazy prices right now, bro. Mm-hmm. Crazy. I trust me, I've been trying to buy one, but it just too much. Not happening. Out the roof. Not happening yet. But cool. Now we have another question uh, by JRX0102. So his question was, so what's up, Ben, with the girls? What's up with the girls? What's up man? with the girls, Ben? That, that's the question we got to ask. Uh, what, was, what was his name? JRX. J- yeah, we, we got to <laughs> ask him what, what's up with the girls. I, mean, I don't know, I don't Ben. Know. You're a young entrepreneur. You're good looking. You have things going for you, man. How's. How's the love life? Is what my boy Jr. wants to know. Ah, uh, that's a that's a tough one. That's se puede one decir or no se puede decir. I don't think I don't think we could discuss that one. Nah, it's podcast. Playing, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, nah, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> chilling, chilling. Any names? Yeah. Uh, any saludos you want to shout out? <laughs> any saludos? <nah. laughs> one saludo or many saludos you want to shout out? Or no know. comment. I don't know about the saludos. That's a Hay cosas en esta vida que a veces no se dicen. <laughs> y, y, y mi compa que tiene quiere tener tranquilidad y respeto. Y todo. Exactly, exactly. We, 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 we private people, I get it. Sorry, JR, te vas a quedar con las ganas. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let me see, this one's a repeat question. Something similar about your... Okay, well, uh, well, this one's similar to what you talked about, but uh, different. I guess we're different. Like, what's, what's your goal for the next year? From here to 2023. Um, and, and hold on, let me see. And this is by, would love to make sure. Shoot, hold on, I just took off. Okay. Uh, muralist and creative. Muralist and creative. Muralist and I guess your homie OG. OG AG 55. Oh, yeah, that's what I was like. That sounds familiar. Um, he said, what's, what's your next big step or goal for 2023? The goal for 2023 would be to uh, to offer more. To our to our clients, not just embroidery. Uh, we're working on getting machines set up for uh, DTF prints, which are directive film prints. So that's um, yeah. uh, that's not embroidery. That's you know kind of like with the heat press film, you mm. know, uh, you know, other applications. You know, what I mean, not not just embroidery, but that's one of them. The another one is uh, setting up a uh, a sticker machine. You okay. know, because uh, basically what we want to do is become you know the one stop shop. You know what I mean? You mm. buy hats, you could also buy stickers for your hats. You mm. can buy tags for your hats, and you could buy uh, uh, a few shirts to go along with it. You know? The stickers, you mean like the ones that they put on the sides of the hats and stuff like that? Or what? Do you, or just stickers to give out, that uh, to, like branding? or what? Do you so a lot of uh, clients, they, they ask for stickers to put onto the hats, onto the brim of the hat. Uh, oh, okay, the sticker that goes on sticker. the top in the middle. Yeah, because it goes hand in hand, you know what I mean? They're, they're, uh, I'm learning, they're man, about the hat industry, man. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, but uh, stickers like that, and then stickers too, because you know, um, brands want to just have stickers with their brand logo on it and give yeah. them out, and you know, um, so that that's the goal, you know, to be able to offer more, not just embroidery, but uh, stickers, you know, and other other printing and, and film and all that other stuff. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's sick. Yeah, no, no, and that's that makes sense. That's smart, because you already, it's like us. We like when we help people start a new business. But there's cycles to it, right? Somebody has an idea to start a new business, has a name, or has a business that they're already getting into. I say you're a gardener, you already have your routes, you're starting to make some money, you want to register your business, well, we set up your corporation, and then next step is opening a business account, (laughs) right? Once your corporation is done, we have partnerships with banks. So we set up their bank accounts, Mm -hmm. uh, and then if they want to get business credit, if they want to get all these things, well, there's that's where it is at, you know, with the bank partnerships we have or the other partnerships we have. But then, hey, now you got to, okay, you got your business account. You want to start writing all your expenses off, and then you want to protect your business mm-hmm. liability-wise. So that's where insurances come in. That's where if you have employees or you want to put yourself on payroll, that's where that comes in just for the liability piece. So we kind of like an in-house too. Yeah. Then if you're doing well and you're making some money, you want to, you know, the last person we want to pay legally doing it right mm-hmm. is, our, is our favorite compa, el tío. El tío? El tío, that's the last person we want to pay. <laughs> El tío Sam. 
<laughs> legally yeah, same. we want to uh, leverage every loophole we have access to for you know to be able to pay the least amount of taxes mm -hmm. keep more money in your guys's pocket right that's the goal mm -hmm. so that's where we come in and we do some tax strategies every end of the year like i don't, I don't take new clients in november or december mm -hmm. we literally sit down with every client that we've had this year and even though i take a financial hit those two months is more of like all right let's make sure you guys are good where are you guys at financially what tax bracket how much expenses do you have like what can yeah. we do to make sure you guys pay the least amount of taxes legally do we have to buy a new car do we have to buy yeah some big boy we you need to go buy a plane some you know Something. whatever i know my homie ben hey ben you need to go buy another city so it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be like that but the whole point is uh, you know you need to set up a 401k or whatever the case may be yeah mm -hmm. we control that whole process because um it's what our clients need exactly. you know, it's what they need it's what it's better to have everything in one place than than be like 20 Scattered. different things trying to get you know everything yeah it's I, that's smart that's very smart so i know it's gonna work so that's awesome man and then i guess the only other uh we had we had a few other questions but let me see yeah another question that we had was by chanel chanel beats or chanel beats i guess chanel beats somebody shout out to chanel beats mm -hmm. <laughs> was just um you know, being so young, what are some challenges you had growing your business and any tips for anybody who is young trying to be an entrepreneur? Because um, there's a lot of young entrepreneurs out there that maybe, I mean, what are some challenges you face being so young? Um, I guess, uh, you know, when, when you're young, and, you know, I'm, I'm still young too, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we're all still young. We're all still young. Shoot, I'm barely going to be 28. <laughs> Exactly, you know, you're 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 still developing, you know what I mean, as a as a person. Mm -hmm. So it's uh it's important to not be uh, uh close minded, you know what I mean, and think that you're that you're right in every way, you know. What I mean there's there's mm -hmm. times where you gotta like we were saying, you know, set your emotions to the side and and be a sponge. Just take in all the information that you can because you're still developing as a as a person when you're young mm -hmm. and that's kind of where you want to make sure that you're uh, taking in as much info as you can, you know, from mm -hmm. everywhere, so that once you're you're you know you're more developed as a person, you're able to run your, you know, your business a little more smoother, a little more efficiently. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, you know, that's very true, very true. By el el belicaso cero nueve, como these placoso as <laughs> chaca chaca names. No, but he just asked. He said, of course, he said, shout out, you know, congrats on all the success. And he said, um, when's the next big event for Needlepoint? The next big event? Uh, we got to do like grand opening part two or something, huh? I, I mean, I wasn't there. I know, that's what I'm saying. So so we got we got to do something. <laughs> something. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, the grand opening is always like a one-time thing, but. Maybe one year anniversary? Yeah, maybe one year anniversary type of thing. Who, who's going to be there? Uh, I mean, we're going to have to. Who do you want there? Who do I want there? We gotta have Grupo Arisgado right there for sure. Grupo Arisgado. Ya vieron, ya tienen sus visas. No quiero que se me rajen aquí al compa. Y por favor, no nos cobren tanto. Nah, but um, uh, the next big event. I mean, I gotta think of something. I gotta, I gotta think of something. Okay, okay. I guess one question that that a lot of people have, right? I know you're you're a hustler too. You're young and everything. You know, what, what do you like to do for fun, man? I know a lot on our off time, we're all hustlers. You know, everybody's hustling, but what do you like to do for fun on your off time, man? Where, where people can connect with you at? Nah, I mean, I like I like going to, you know, Dodger games, baseball games, you know, because I used to play baseball a lot. So mm. I like going to baseball games. And, I mean, just going out, going out with friends, family, you know, to the beach or, you know, going out on vacation, going to Vegas or traveling, you know. Yeah, you, you barely are allowed to Vegas. Yeah, barely. <laughs> barely, barely, huh? Yeah. Um, like, like for example, last week we went on vacation for my cousin's birthday to mm. Mazatlan. So we're, you know, just having fun, you know, yeah. just having fun, having time off. And that's the, that's the goal, you know, mm. being able to enjoy life in those areas. Yeah, no, that's why we do what we do, right? So that we exactly. can have a life different than most people have. Mm. That's sick, man. No, well, there's some other repetitive questions. So if you guys want to, sorry for those who didn't get their question answered, but. The answer will be in the podcast, so please rewind back another rewind. hour, and you'll you'll for sure hear your rewind answers. Back. 
But uh, no, just again, just wanted to say thank you again today uh, for, for coming out and accepting the invitation. Uh, we're really grateful that people like you, you know, accept our invitation and, you know, are willing to, to come out and share. Yeah. Come out and share, add some value to others without expecting anything. And, you know, thank you for bringing some some merch. I know we have some, you know, some awesome hats. So for the next person, y'all don't know who it's going to be. I know who it's going to be, you know, but we... We're going to have some some pretty interesting people coming soon. So uh, I'm excited for that. I hope you guys are excited for that as well. But any any final message you want to leave for the people? Um, I mean, uh, you know, first of all, message to our, you know, our, our team. And, uh, you know, without them, you know, that they're the ones that's able to get the quality out to you guys. Who's the um, team? Who's the team? Who's the team? Uh, you know, my brother, Jason. Um, Jason. Our family friend, Andrew. Andrew. Um, Christina, Cassidy, Onofre, um, Michael. So, you know, we have a, a whole team. Uh, and then awesome. all, all, our, all our support group, you know, my family, my friends, everybody. And then, of course, you know, all our clients. Like like I said, you know, we love all of you guys because of you guys. And because of your guys' support, we're able to come onto this podcast. And we're able to create something and grow together. You know what I mean? Grow together. Not just, it's not just the success on one part. You know, it's it's... It's you guys as well. You know, mm-hmm. we're all growing together. So, I really appreciate all our, all our customers, all you guys. You know, we love we love you guys, um, and uh, we really do. We really do. We really do. And uh, and yeah, you know. Any, we, any shout outs, especially any any any, any shout outs to anybody? Any shout outs? I mean, uh, not and not not any specific shout outs, but shout out to all our customers. That's like right. I said, all of them. Best shout out right there. Mm-hmm. Awesome, man. No, well, again, this was episode six, and uh, definitely, I mean, I think after, I mean, I, I learned a lot from this podcast. I hope you guys got a lot of value as well. I know Ben is a, a very good example of somebody who actually, at such a young age, can, can really leverage just the ambition somebody has, take control of his life, and actually create something from it, right? Which I think we can all do, and I'd love to, I kind of love to leave with the lesson, because I feel like it, like a call to action or lesson. And I, and I hope for me in this case, I was going to, I'm going to change this up because I have so many of these different types of things at home. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I love to surround myself with like a vision board with like quotes everywhere. Like even my phone has like stuff, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. and I was going to bring the one that I have that, that just reminded me so much of it right now when you talked, because I think you're a good example of that. It's like in this life, we only have two things that we can control. Mm-hmm. And that's your actions and your attitude. Exactly. And, and I think you're a very good example of that because you, you obviously yeah, you come from a business family and everything, and, and you can either, you know, use that as a reason or as an excuse. And you've mm-hmm. obviously chosen or to, to use it as a reason and, and really take action to create something for yourself, not just right off your family. Exactly, exactly. You know, you, you can be, uh, you know, comfortable where you're at. You know what I mean? You got you to gotta always want more, you know what I mean? Always want to be able to, to do better and, and take it a step further. Yeah. You know? exactly. And in, in, in the times we live in right now, like it's – they're very interesting times. I like to. I never like to speak negative about whatever situation we're facing. They're very interesting times. Mm-hmm. But if you look in history, all the biggest and most successful companies that have happened or come out of mm-hmm. have come after recessions. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I feel like these last three years have been, or if whether we're in a recession or not, whatever you want to believe, I feel like this is an opportunity for people to stand out and for really for people to really actually make a big difference in this world and set themselves up financially f- and their families, man. So I know Thank you, I know you're doing that. So I'm, you know, it's awesome to see that. And it's my respects to you. Don't matter your age. Like at the end of the day, mm-hmm. shit, I, I respect people that are making it happen. Yeah. And respect is earned and you, you definitely have earned it. So excited. Thank you guys for, for watching episode six. I know, check out the other episodes we've had. I know we had some pretty awesome, you know, if you like live music, we have some other episodes with Grupo Nueva Linea, Afición. We have some other live music, you know, and, Y los que vienen, that's the, that's the best part. But thank you, Ben. Uh, thank you again, Ben. And um, Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, hopefully you guys got some value today. We're definitely wrapping up episode six, but looking forward to the next one. Stay tuned for the next episode coming up next Monday. Thanks, guys.